When did you uh, first meet uh, Nicole? Summer of 1977. Where did you meet her? At a place called a Daisy. In Beverly Hills? Yes. And wh what was she doing there? And she was, uh, I think she was a hostess. Were you there alone? No. Who were you with? Joe Stellini. Just the two of you? Well, we went in, just the two of us, yes. And <coughs> did you um, start up a relationship with um, Nicole at that time? A few days later. You called her? No. How did you get in touch with her? I was having lunch at the Daisy, and she came in. Now, um, Nicole was how old at the time? 18. And you were how old? I believe tw oh, 28, 29 maybe. 29? Yeah. Were you married? Yes. Were you separated? Mm, we had just finished a separation, so we were just trying to see if we could get back together. You and Marguerite? Yes. That's your first wife? Yes. When did you marry Marguerite? 1967. And uh, when did you end your marriage with her? Officially, it was probably 19... Uh, I don't know, late 70s. After you met Nicole? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Um, during the uh, in time, strike that, when you met up with Nicole in the summer of 1977, uh, after the first couple of times seeing her, did you begin dating her? Yeah. yeah. In other words, did you start a romantic relationship with yes. her? Yes, yes. And at that time, you were married uh, to Marguerite, right? Yes. And living with Marguerite, right? When I was in L.A., yeah. You were a professional football player at the time and you were yes. traveling? Well, I lived in New York and she didn't move to New York with me. I lived in Buffalo during the season. <coughs> during the football season, right? And Marguerite didn't move to New York with me. And during the off season, um, you came back to uh, the home of Marguerite and you in Los Angeles? At the end of that year, for a while, yes. End of 77? Yes, for a while. At what point did you permanently move out of uh, your home with Marguerite? Sometime after I got back from football in 78. Eight. Yes. Okay. So, um, now wh where did you move? Uh, where did you live in Los Angeles when you came back after the 1978 football season? After I left, uh, I can't recall if we were on Mulholland Drive or where at that time. I lived for a while in the Westward Marquis. Uh, alone there? Yes. And then you moved where? Mm. I lived between there and an apartment on Wilshire Boulevard. And then I went back to Buffalo. Oh, I went to San Francisco. And... Where does Mulholland fit in here? Is that the home with Marguerite? Yes. Okay. <coughs> now, during this... Uh, <laughs> first couple of years that you knew Nicole, let's say up to your divorce from um, Marguerite, mm -hmm. which you said was late 70s, did uh, you live with Nicole? No. Uh, when did you first uh, live with Nicole? I think when I came back from probably right at 80 right at 80, after the 79 season. So January of 80? I would say, yeah. And um, I'm just estimate. where did you and Nicole move to? I think I rented a place at the, well, I rented a place on, at the end of Stone Canyon, at the end of Stone Canyon. And that was the first home of Nicole and you? Mm-hmm. You have to answer all the yes. <laughs> Before you moved into Stone Canyon, uh, for the first three years that you and Nicole knew each other, how regularly did you uh, see one another? Quite regularly. Uh, did you 
Was she your principal uh, mate, so to speak? After the, after the first year, yes. Yeah. After we had known each other a year, I would say yes. And where did Nicole live uh, during those uh, three years, from 77 to January of 80? She had a place in Westwood right off of Wilshire in, in Veteran, and then she had a place on Bedford. Did you f uh, furnish those places for her? Yes. Both of them? Yes. Okay. And was she working? Sometimes. When you were uh, playing football, did she travel with you? No. So she was at home in Los Angeles? She visited me in uh, Buffalo and then spent a lot of time in San Francisco with me. When, when was the first season you were in uh, San Francisco? 78. Hey, uh, so starting September 78, right? Yes. And um, how many seasons were you in San Francisco? Two. 78 to 79, 79 to 80, right? Mm -hmm. You had an apartment in San Francisco during those two years? A condominium, yes. That you purchased? Yes. And Nicole lived there with you? When she was in San Francisco, yes. Okay. Uh, so during the year 78, 79, 79, 80, Nicole was shuttling between her places that you provided for her in Los Angeles and the uh, condo in San Francisco. Is that right? The place that I helped her with in Los Angeles and uh, the place in, in San Francisco. When you say helped her, you mean she helped her? I gave her money when she couldn't pay the rent, and sometimes what, she could pay the rent. What was she doing for a living? Uh, she was working at the Daisy. For, for a couple of years? A, a year. And then after that, what? Uh, she decorated. She started decorating for me. She decorated my place and then just decorated. She and earned income from decorating? From decorating and she, I went to Vegas a few times, made a lot of money, and she made a lot of money also. You mean gambling? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. When is the last time that she worked for a living? I would say uh, late 80s. And did she work from the uh, 70s through the late 80s? Depending if she had a decorating job. So whenever she worked, it was in the decorating business? Yes. And she would uh, do interior decorating of homes? Yes. Okay. What's the home that you... Uh, purchase that she decorated it just mentioned a few moments ago Brentwood. Stone Canyon no Brentwood oh Rockingham Rockingham uh, did you move from Stone Canyon to Rockingham yes okay how many years did you live in Stone Canyon I think just one off season or one spring that, that was a rental you said yes and when did you move into Rockingham I don't I don't know when did you purchase it I purchased it in 77 but it had to go through a lot of renovations and changes before we moved into it. Was it vacant for two or three years? Maybe a year. <coughs> so did someone live in it before you? Yes. You rented it out? No. Who lived there? A family called the Eastons. Uh, why were they living there? Because they owned it. You said you purchased it in 77? From the Eastons. And they continued to live there? No. No, after they moved out when you purchased it in 77, right? Yes. And you didn't move in until sometime in 1980 or 81, actually. Yes. So for those four years, who was living at Rockingham? I don't think it was four years because uh, I didn't purchase it until late 77. Then I did a major renovation, which took the better part of a year. And then Marguerite and Jason and Arnell moved in. I see. And then our divorce was final, and I moved back in. Was Rockingham a home that uh, you purchased uh, when you were still married to and living with uh, Marguerite? Before I met Nicole, yes. I see. So when you met Nicole, uh, you and Marguerite and the children were living in Rockingham? No. But moved into Rockingham while you met Nicole, while you were dating Nicole, right? Mm, yes, when I was seeing Nicole, yes. Okay. And when did uh, Marguerite move out of Rockingham? Whenever our divorce was final, and I, I don't recall when that was. And then after she moved out, you moved in with Nicole? Yes. And <coughs> generally speaking, what was the uh, time frame of that? 80. And sometime after January 80? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, uh, from January 80 uh, until uh, when did Nicole live with you in, at Rockingham? 
her primary residence was that until we divorced. I mean, until we separated. Okay. And you, you sep Nicole filed for divorce in January of 1992, correct? January or February, late January, early February. Okay. And when, when did she move out? Late January. When she filed? Well, she, we, we were separating and uh, hmm, I told her that if she didn't file, I would. So after three weeks of just being separated, she found a place and around that same time she filed. During the uh, time period uh, when Nicole first moved in with you at Rockingham until uh, she moved out in January, February of 1992, were you ever separated for marital reasons? I'm sorry, say that again. Were the two of you ever separated during that time frame because of marital problems? Between what? When the first time she moved in Rockingham in January 80 and when she left in uh, early 1992. Separated? Yeah. Uh, you got to be more definitive because in other I can't, words, did I you move out or she move out for any period of time because of uh, difficulties in your marriage? Move out. Uh, we weren't married for the first uh, four or five years. We were at Rockingham, uh, so it wouldn't have been a marital thing. I were mean, there? for a, for a day or a week, yes, she moved out from time to time for a day or a week, maybe. What's the longest she moved out? I don't recall. What's the longest she moved out? I never moved out. When did you get married? Uh, 85. On what day? Um, February 2nd. February 2, 1985? Mm, yes, I believe so. And when was um, Sydney born? Uh, in 85. What's her birthday? Uh, October 17th. And Justin? I believe it was uh, 70, I mean 87. 1987? Mm, yes, I'm trying to think it was 88. Maybe in 88. 88? Okay, I'm just trying to think he's two years younger, but it's uh, August 6th. 88? I believe it was 88, yeah. <coughs> Did Nicole move out? Um, you said she moved out from time to time. Did she do so um, between uh, the time she first moved in in early 1980 and the date of your marriage in February of 85? Yes. About how many times? I don't know. Can you estimate for us? No, I can't. Why did she move out from time to time? I know we had disagreements. About what? Various things, I know. At one point, I was, didn't want to get married. From the time that uh, you got married in February of 1985 until January, February of 1992, did Nicole move out uh, from time to time? Well, give me that again. From the time that you and Nicole got married in February of 1985 until the time that she moved out permanently uh, when she filed for divorce, during that interval of time, seven years approximately, did she move out uh, of Rockingham from time to time? Move out? Yeah, like for a week or? Well, not move out, no. We had another place. So if, if we were not getting along, she sometimes would go to our other place. What is that other place? It was uh, in Laguna. When was Laguna purchased? I don't recall. Roughly? Mid, early, mid 80s. Mid I believe before I was married. Before you married I Nicole? I believe so, yes. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of that, but I believe before I was married. And when did you purchase the place in New York? <sighs> 80, well, 90. I believe it was 90. Did Nicole ever uh, move into the <coughs> New York place? Yes. Did she ever move in there because of a break on your relationship? No. Or just to join you while you were in New York? Yes. Uh, did Nicole ever move into the Laguna place because of a break in your relationship? No. You said she went down there to stay from time to time when you no. had problems? 
well, when we had problems, and quite often when we didn't have problems, we lived in the Laguna during the summers most time. Hey, during your relationship with Nicole from, let's say, January 80 to uh, 1992, did you have any other residences besides New York, Lagoon, and Rockingham? She did. I mean, she owned property, but no. Where did she own? Uh, San Francisco. Uh, is that something you had purchased when you were living in San Francisco? Mm, yes. And as part of the um, prenuptial agreement, you gave her that property? Yes, essentially, yes. Is something uh, incorrect about what I what I no, said? I say essentially, that's what it what it was. What do you mean by essentially? I just wanted her to have some income, and I gave her that so that she can have some income too. You you owned it in your name, and you transferred yeah. it to her. Yes. Did she assume the uh, mortgage? There was no mortgage for her. It was it was, was it paid off already? Essentially. Yes. Or you took care of it? No, I uh, part of it was in my trust at the time. I guess there was a loan on it in my trust and most of it was paid off, but to her it was uh, it was free and clear. So you transfer that property to her roughly 1985? Yes. And from that point on did she rent that property out? Yes. And did she ever use it as a residence? No. And did you? No. Now, <coughs> excuse me, did Nicole own any other property besides San Francisco? I believe so. I believe she had, well, yeah, I knew she had something in Laguna, but I, I, you know, Nicole's business was her business. The place in Laguna, is that something you bought for her? No. She bought it on her own? Yes. And did she buy it during your marriage? Yes. Is that a place where you and she ever stayed? No. She rented that out? Yes. Okay, so she had two rental units, right? Laguna in San Francisco during a good part of your marriage? Yes. You don't even look like it. <laughs> Got a little yeah, more hair. <laughs> you would take me a long time. <laughs> now, um, did you, you and Nicole, um, you said had a number of disagreements and she would move out from time to time or go stay in Laguna. Did, uh, and you said one of the causes uh, of your, uh, of these uh, disagreements was your, desire not to get married. Well, he didn't talk about a number of disagreements. She moved out either. Well, I don't I think, think I said did. she moved out. I think oh. she went away. She moved out as taking all your clothes and everything. I don't recall her doing that. Well, she, did she ever move out in that sense during the entire time that, that you happened. were uh, living at Rockingham together? I don't recall Where that. She took all of her belongings and said, look, I'm, I'm gone. Um, I moved out, except for the last time, of course. Uh, Maybe once. When was that? Uh, the day before we got engaged. It, is that because you wouldn't get engaged? Partially, yes. And um, yeah. you solved that problem by getting agreeing engaged. to marry her? Yes. Okay, and did she physically move out? She just took some things. And uh, how long was she gone? That night. So one night? Yes. <coughs> What other reasons did you have uh, conflicts and disagreements with her such that she would go stay someplace else for a while? One time she found some phone numbers uh, of girls. Uh, then other than that, I, I can't specifically tell you. You can only remember one occasion where she went to stay someplace else because she was upset that you were seeing other women? No, that's not what I said. You said she saw phone numbers of girls. I take it that means that she thought you were uh, uh, cheating on her. I don't know about what she thought, but there were phone numbers and she uh, moved. I'm not moved, left for a day or two. Or well, you and, he had a, you and she had an argument about this? Mm, I'm sure we had, yes. And. Uh, what what year was that? I don't know. Mid eighties. In the eighties. Yeah. After marriage. I don't know. During one of her pregnancies. Uh, I don't. She never moved out when she was pregnant. No. And uh, who who were the girls 
whose phone numbers caused no this idea. disagreement? I have absolutely no idea. Can you recall anything uh, about your disagreement with her on this subject? No. <coughs> Did you argue frequently about uh, infidelity on your part? No. Nope. Did you ever argue about that? Yes. On how many occasions? I don't know. More than a dozen? No. More than five? I don't know. Was it the most constant, uh, was it the most um, frequent topic of conflict between the two of you during your 12-year uh, relationship at Rockingham? I'd say no. What was? I don't know. Did you, did you have any topic of, common topic of conflict or disagreement b between the two of you? My traveling. How many times did you fight over uh, your seeing other women or her thinking you were seeing other women? Well, it, look, when you say fight, you have verbal disagreements, yeah. is that what you mean by a fight? Uh, well, you, you've already said you never physically hit her, right? Well, he said he physically had an encounter with her on January 1st, 1989. You've gone into that in great detail. Yeah. Well, you never hit her, right? No, I never, yeah. never punched her or anything like that, no. But by the way, you never kicked her either, is that mm, right? That's correct. My question was, how many times did you fight over your uh, seeing other women or her thinking you were seeing other women? And I'm, again, I'm that's not limiting verbal it disagreements. To, yeah. I couldn't say. There was the one occasion in 1989 having to do with Catherine, correct? No, that's absolutely wrong. Why is that wrong? Catherine was Marcus's girl. We didn't fight but, over that. But you and she were, um, that, that evening, uh, the fight that evening began with a uh, discussion about Catherine, did it not? You mean, are you talking January 1st, 1989 yeah. again? Okay. Mm, what do you mean? Uh, you have to be Let me ask you this. On, yes, in January of 89 when you had the, uh, the incident with her, did that have anything to do with her uh, belief that you were being unfaithful? I don't know what her belief was. She had a conversation with Catherine Allen. You should call Catherine Allen. Uh, she was wrong. She ended up talking to Catherine Allen and realizing she was wrong. So you would have to talk to Catherine Allen. Oh, about that. we will. And Marcus Allen as well, once we can get them Hopefully. served. They apparently don't want to be served. I don't blame them. Anyway, um, what was Nicole's uh, concern expressed to you about uh, Catherine and or Marcus Allen? She had a conversation with Catherine. She misinterpreted something that Catherine told her. What did Catherine tell her? Something about earrings. What about earrings? Uh, Catherine was talking about the earrings Marcus had bought her and why Nicole was, from what I gathered, you know, gushing over how nice those earrings uh, were that Catherine was, uh, Marcus had bought Catherine. Uh, Catherine said, some, well, look at you. Look what you got. And Nicole misinterpreted uh, that as that, I don't know, you have to ask, you know, Nicole you never was clear about it to me, so you'd have to talk to Nicole ended up talking to Catherine Allen and they had it straightened out. Well, <coughs> what I don't understand about that is what, what caused Nicole to get upset with you about Catherine's comment to her, look what you got. I am assuming that Nicole felt that what Catherine was saying that I bought some earrings, but what Catherine was referring to was I guess Nicole wasn't aware that she was dripping in diamond earrings that night and uh, that's what Catherine was referring to. That you had bought earrings for whom? I don't know. You have to talk to Catherine about that. I, I never got that clear from Nicole. Did Nicole accuse you of buying earrings for another woman? Mm. She said something about what about the earrings that Catherine was talking about. And uh, from that point, it turned into an argument. Did you know what she was talking about, by the way? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I tried to get Catherine on the phone for Nicole to, to clear it up, to find out what was going on, but Nicole wouldn't talk to Catherine, and I guess the next day they did. Where did Catherine live? In Los Angeles? Yes. So you were going to call her at what? Marcus's house, yes. Two, three, four in the morning? Yes. What time was it? Whatever, two, three, four in the morning. To straighten this out? No, for Nicole to, to hey, you know, Nicole couldn't tell me what she was talking about, so 
and she had mentioned Catherine's not, name, so I said, hey, well, get Catherine on the phone and let's straighten it out. But typically, she didn't want to straighten it out. She wanted to argue. During the course of your uh, relationship with Nicole, uh, would you say you argued quite a bit? No. Frequently? No. Uh, on a regular basis? No. It was once, scheduled at 10 o'clock every once Monday. Once a month? We probably had, when well, you said argument. Yeah. You know, I don't know what Would you fight and argue said. a lot? Do you have to speak one at a time, please? No. W w would you say that your relationship was a stormy one? No. Would you say that it was a healthy relationship? I thought we had a great relationship. For the entire time that the two of you were together? I thought until 92, when we started to split, we had our ups and downs like every relationship. But I think we had a tremendous relationship, a relationship that everybody seemed to want to share with us because they were always around. How do you know they wanted to share that? Because they were always around. That's what I interpreted well, that to But mean. you were a celebrity, right? Yes. So that's why they were around, right? Well, don't, don't answer. Believe. But, I mean, did they tell you, uh, O.J. and Nicole, we, we really uh, envy your relationship? We D Don't answer this. No, is that what people told you? Don't, don't answer. I've that. heard that before. I mean, he's making a statement. I'm entitled to examine him about it, Mr. Well, Baker. you're not entitled to ask uh, speculative questions and ask a witness to speculate as to what people. It don't, <coughs> don't speculate. I, uh, uh, I agree with your lawyer on that. We don't want any speculation. We just want your recollection of what, what things, what were said. Okay. Your perception, uh, based on what people said and how they behaved, is that they wanted to be around uh, Nicole and you because you two had a great relationship. Is that right? Yeah. And you said you had your ups and downs. Uh, what were the downs? Well, my, my scheduling. I traveled quite a bit. Uh, Nicole and I were both bullheaded and quite often didn't agree on the same things. Uh, I'm a uh, type of guy that when I get into something, I get a little manic about it, golf being one. Golf became an issue with the two of us. Uh, when? Probably the late 80s into the 90s. What else uh, became an issue between the two of you besides golf and your traveling? As I stated before, uh, uh, finding phone numbers. Uh, you said uh, that happened on one occasion. One occasion I recall. No other occasions, right? Well, there occasions she saw phone numbers. I get People give me numbers all the time, so it's, I get cards and numbers from everybody. So it's, it's uh, uh, on an occasion that I recall specifically uh, that happening. Um, but, yeah. Where did she find these phone numbers? Uh, whenever I get home, I, and I empty my pockets off a road trip or something. I'll empty my pockets on my vanity. And uh, uh, at one point, I guess she went through my drawer and found the phone number. Found phone numbers. And how many times during the uh, entire time you lived with her at Rockingham were you unfaithful? You don't have to answer that. How many, don't answer that. How many extramarital relationships did you have? Don't answer that either. Well, you said uh, they had a great relationship. I'm entitled to examine him about that. Uh, I don't agree with you, and he's not going to answer that question. You don't want to answer that question? Don't answer that question either. Were you unfaithful? But don't answer that question. Now, isn't it true that uh, you, you were having sexual relations in the same house uh, that you were living with Nicole at the time that she was in that home? Don't answer that. Isn't that true? Don't well, answer During one of her pregnancies? Don't answer that. Mr. Baker, I'm entitled to probe uh, his entire history of his relationship with Nicole. I disagree with you, and he's not going to answer it. Didn't you and she have a uh, confrontation over your um, having sex with another woman in the guest house at Rockingham? No. Never. Go ahead. You've answered it. Never. Ne that event never occurred? Never. Have you ever heard that event reported in the news or the media? Don't answer that. It's irrelevant what you've heard. I've heard everything reported in the news media. You didn't think it was irrelevant what Mr. Kalin heard in the media? In any event, make your speeches outside in front of the microphones. No, we're saving them for you, Mr. Baker. You're going to save them a long time. <coughs> Did you ever have a relationship with another woman in the same at your Rockingham residence while Nicole was there? Don't answer that. Did you ever fight with Nicole over such an incident? Don't. Never. 
Sure. Can't do that to you. Never. Never? Never. Okay. Did, uh, did you have a difficult time with Nicole's pregnancies? No. Did you become abusive towards her during her pregnancies? No. How many times was she pregnant? By me. That I know of four. And um, two of them were aborted? Yes. Before your marriage? No, one before, one after. When was the first one? Early on in our relationship, I don't know. I you were still married to Marguerite? I may have been at that time separated from Marguerite. <coughs> and when was the second one? I believe 89 or 90. Did you know she had that abortion? Yes. Uh, did you agree with it? No, we had an argument about it. Tell me about that argument. I didn't want her to have an abortion. She had said that after Sydney and Justin that she would never have an abortion again. Yet she wanted an abortion. Why? I don't know. What did she tell you? She just didn't want to go through being pregnant. She didn't want to have any more kids. At it, that it, time, she did. Did she? Ex um, did you say the abortion was in 1989 or 1990? Yes. Which year? One of the two. I, I don't recall. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, was this abortion after? or before the January 1, 1989 incident? After. Okay. Do you know how long after that incident she got pregnant? No. By the way, uh, was she pregnant at any other time by someone else other than you? You said... Uh, that I know of? Yeah, that you know Once. Of. When was that? Uh, I think in 90, 92. Yeah, how did you find that out? She told me. Is it during the time that the two of you were uh, separated? Yes. And she was living at Gretna Green? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Did she tell you about it uh, beforehand? Beforehand, what's that? Before the abortion? Yes. <clears throat> Did she seek your advice on what to do? No. She just told you what she was going to do? She was emotional, and she just needed someone to talk to. Um, and you talked to her about it? Yes. And did she tell you who the father was? I didn't ask. Do you know? No. Do you have any information as to who the father I was? I guess, but that would be a guess. Why would she it be a guess? He doesn't want you to guess. Well, you why? Know, because she was seeing evidently different people. So Who was she seeing at that time? At the time she talked to me, I assumed she was seeing a guy named Joseph. Joseph I Peruli? I don't know his last name. Um, this is the same Joseph who was at the Jenner's Christmas party in December of 1993? Correct. Uh, but. Then she told me a month later that she hadn't been seeing this guy. She hadn't been seeing Joseph since like June. Of 92? Yeah, so, you know, I never asked her who, who the guy was. I, I assume it was this Brett guy, but you don't want me to assume. <laughs> Brett Shaves? Yes. <coughs> he worked for uh, her uh, divorce lawyers, right? I sorry, he been worked told that. for her divorce lawyers. I've been told that, yes. Getting back to this uh, this previous abortion in 19, a after the 1989 incident, did you and she um, argue, well, withdrawn, did she express to you uh, the, her desire to have an abortion because um, of physical abuse by her? No. By you against her? No. Or because um, she uh, did not want to suffer any mistreatment uh, during pregnancy? No. None of that was expressed to you? No, no, no. Did she say anything to you uh, along the lines that you had given her a hard time during the previous pregnancies and she didn't want to live through that again? No. So what was what was the reason she gave you? We were moving. You ask and answer. Don't no. answer it. You've already told you me. You were moving where? Please complete your answer. Don't. I told her not to ask the question. Just ask Baker, and answer. Cut him off in the middle of a question. Besides, no, I cut him off in the middle of an answer. In the middle of an answer, excuse me. Besides, I don't think it's appropriate to instruct uh, and ask and answer when following up on this area. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. You're not going to let him answer? You're right. <coughs> uh, 
How many conversations did you have about uh, her getting this abortion before she had it done? I don't know. More than one? She was very emotional about it, so I think when we talked about it the first time, uh, I avoided the conversation and she went and had it done. Uh, when she went and had it done, uh, did you know that she was doing so? Yes. Okay, so, so she cleared it with you first, right? Well, she I don't know what to do it. Well, I don't know. Don't answer that. I don't no. know what that means. <coughs> when she, did the two of you reach a mutual decision that she would have it done? No. So she had it done against your wishes? Yes. Did uh, she seek any counseling at that time, to your knowledge? I don't know. Uh, did you and she seek any counseling with respect to this decision? No. Not that I know of. Not that I recall. Did she have any uh, medical uh, treatment for injuries during that pregnancy that resulted in the abortion? No. Not that I know of, no. Did she have any medical uh, treatment for injuries during uh, her pregnancy with uh, Justin? No. And did she have any medical treatment for injuries during her pregnancy with Sydney? No. Do you know if she ever had any medical treatment for injuries during your relationship with her? No. Do you know if she received any medical treatment as a result of her injuries uh, from the 1989 incident? I know she didn't. I wanted her to go. And she did, and there was nothing for him to do. She did seek medical treatment. No, I asked uh, AC to take her to, to. She had a headache or something, and I. Uh, we didn't know if, she, if it was from, a hangover or from, our tussle, so I asked AC to take her to uh, have her checked. But she went down. There was nothing to do. Where did they go? I think St. John's. Emergency room. Yes. And that was on New Year's Day. Yeah, that was after the after the whole police thing. Later on in the uh, morning, you mean? Well, the police <coughs> didn't see fit to take her to any place, so I thought, just in case, she should. When you say the police didn't see fit, what do you mean by that? They, obviously, they didn't take her any place for any medical treatment, so, you know, I thought she should go to some place for her. To Did they, look. <coughs> are you to saying see? that they should have taken her? I don't know. I don't know if they should have or shouldn't have. They obviously didn't see fit to, and they didn't. And when I asked her, she said they didn't. And I said, well, you should go. And she didn't want to go, and I told AC to take her. When you uh, had this conversation that she should go, was this in person? Yes. Is this after the police left? Uh, yes. So when you left the residence of, while the police were there, where did you go? I went to uh, a friend's house. Whose house? Alan Schwartz. And how long did you stay there? Mm. 40 minutes, maybe, the first time. Then where'd you go? Back to my house. Were the police gone? Yes. And was Nicole there? Yes. Had she gone to the uh, <coughs> police station? I, I, don't, I didn't know at that time. Do you know whether she went at all that day to the police station? Now I do, but at the time I didn't. Okay. And when you got back, um, uh, was it just you and she there alone? In AC. And how did AC get there? I don't know. I think Arnell called me. How did Arnell know about this? Well, she was the one that told her and, and Michelle were the people that told me uh, to leave because they thought I was going to get into a, a, we were in an argument with this uh, Detective Edwards, I believe it was. Uh, Arnell was living there at the time? She was home at the time, yes. And Michelle was the housekeeper, right? Yes. And she was living there too, right? Yes. Did either Arnell or Michelle witness any of the physical confrontation that you and Nicole had that evening? Between Nicole and I? Yeah. No. When the police were um, on the scene, uh, Arnell and Michelle told you to leave? Yes. And the reason that they told you was to avoid a confrontation with the police? With, with Detective Edwards. And w w was there some reason why they feared that you might have a confrontation with Detective Edwards? Because he was uh, an asshole. And describe how he behaved. Uh, he was uh, saying things to me like, uh, I don't know. Uh, 
you you two should be apart. She should leave you. And I said something to him. I thought you were supposed to be diffusing this situation here. And he made another comment. And uh, I said, well, who are you to be saying this to me? And at that point, they were telling me, OJ, you know, uh, Dad, you should, Dad, don't do this, because we're standing out. Nicole was trying to get out of the car. Uh, and Nicole said something about the babies. And I said, there's two women in here to take care of the babies. And he said that to them. And uh, I don't know, he and I had some words. And then Arnell and Michelle were saying, Dad, OJ, just go. What were these words that you and Edward I don't know. Said? He, was, uh, he was saying uh, things to me that I thought uh, a police officer, I thought his job at that particular time was to defuse the situation, and he was doing just the opposite of that. Uh, what was he doing? I don't know. He seemed to be trying to bait me. Bait you into doing what? I don't know. Bait you into getting upset, you mean? Well, he was succeeding in that, yes. Did he use profanity towards you? I think at one point, yes. Did you towards him? I don't recall. I may have. But I, I really don't call us. I don't recall doing that, no. You heard him testify at the criminal trial? Yes. Did he describe the um, incident accurately to the best of your recollection? Oh, no. He lied on numerous things. He did? Yes. Tell me. Well, he, he said that Nicole told him, and I don't believe Nicole would have lied to him, that that the reason for the fight was that I had some of my house help in bed. Uh, that you were sleeping with your house help? Yeah, Michelle or, or Ruth. I mean, I'm, I think the Browns uh, are still pretty close to Ruth. Who's and Ruth? And if they thought that, they certainly wouldn't be still close to her. Uh, and Michelle, when you see Michelle, I don't think you would buy that either. And I know Nicole didn't say that to him. And I know that N Nicole has never said that to anybody. And since he, there was a female officer there also. What was her name? I have no idea, and somehow they'd hit her effectively. Hit and, her? Yes. She didn't testify? Yeah, of course not. And, uh, and now I understand why this guy was on the Christopher Commission at that time. Who? Detective Edwards. And what does that have to do with anything? It has to do with the way he obviously was treating me. He must have been reported for that uh, with other people because he wouldn't have been on a, on a, on a list that, in my mind, uh, singled out 40 officers out of uh, seven or 8,000 officers as uh, officers who've, who've had problems. Is that the first time that you had experienced a problem with the uh, LAPD? Yes. Or any officer, uh, uh, for that matter. Any officer, yeah. and, and would that be true uh, through the um, through June 12, 1994? That's correct. So through June 12, 1994, the only time you had a problem with any law enforcement person was Detective Edwards. Yes. On the one occasion on January 1, 89. Right? That's what I believe. Yes. Did you uh, file a report against Mr. Edwards? No, uh, but Detective when, Edwards, excuse when me. When Detective Farrell spoke to me about it the next day, uh, I told him that, you know, he, he seemed to be as interested in Detective Farrell, I mean, Detective Edwards, as me. And I just say, hey, this guy wasn't a good guy, but I didn't want to get into it because I just wanted this thing to go away. So Detective Farrell, based on your conversations with him, appear to agree with you that Edwards? No, he seemed to be interested in asking me questions about how Defect Detective Edwards, uh, you know, what happened with him. And I said, well, we had some words. And he says, what? And I said, you know, I really don't want to get into that. I, you know, I just want to deal with whatever I got to do to to make this thing go away. Did you not pursue it any any further other than talk to Detective Farrell? That is, pursue it, your complaint against Detective Edwards? Correct. Now, who is Ruth? Ruth was a, a nanny. What's Ruth's last name? I don't know. Lou Brown to tell you that. Does she still work uh, for the Brown family? No, no, she, no, she certainly doesn't work for him. She came out to help out, and uh, from what I'm told, didn't get paid anything. But so she's not working for him. Now, did you and Nicole have any uh, disagreement that evening over your sleeping with house help? No, and never have we. Never. <laughs> Ever. I'm 
do you know, um, do you have any knowledge or information as to what the basis of that uh, comment by Edwards was? He's the only guy I've ever heard say anything remotely like that. So you would have to ask, uh, you know, I have my opinions, but, you know. What's your opinion? I believe he's a, a racist is what I believe he is um, and a liar. You mean racist against African Americans? Yes. Did you uh, believe that at the time? I believe something was wrong with him at the time. I didn't know he would sit on a stand and say that Nicole told him I was trying to make, was having sex with my house help. <laughs> Is that the first time you had heard that? Yes. It was on the witness stand? Yes. And you didn't hear it at the time? And I never heard it any time in my life until he said it, just blurted it out on the stand. It was, it was amazing. And you had no contact with um, Detective Edwards between January 1, 89. Well, actually, you never talked to him or saw him after January 1, 89. Is that right? As far as I know, no. I wouldn't <coughs> recognize him anyway. You haven't filed well, withdrawn. When you left Alan Schwartz's house and you came back to uh, Rockingham, you said Cowlings was there? Yes. And then you uh, asked Cowlings to take Nicole to uh, yeah, St. Well, John's we, Hospital? Yeah, Nicole said, I said, you know, you better, you know, she said she, her, her, she was looking for some aspirin or something. And I, I said, did your head bother you? And she says, yeah, I'm, I'm just getting a headache. And uh, she didn't want to talk. And I said, well, you should have that checked. And uh, AC was there, and um, uh, Nicole didn't want to talk to me, so I just I got some clothes and left. Where did you go? Back to Alan Schwartz's. And how long did you stay with Mr. Schwartz? A day. And um, you came back to Rockingham then? Yes, but I was upset also. I was pretty upset about the whole thing. Um, he didn't ask you if you were oh, upset. He asked okay. you when you came back. Yes. Well, I came back to get some clothes. <clears throat> well, you, you came back that day to get clothes and went back to Schwartz's and stayed there one night, right? Yeah. And then and you came back to Rockingham, and, and did you go someplace else? Yeah, I stayed a few nights at uh, a friend of mine's house named Mike Ornstein. <coughs> so the first night was at Schwartz's house yeah. and then Ornstein for two nights? Yeah. And then back to Rockingham? Well, I was at Rockingham most of the time during that period of time, but I, I just felt I needed some distance. Why were you upset? Because I thought it was a, I thought it was a, I thought we had had a great night. We had had a, what I felt a, a great, a great period of time together. And to me, uh, it was, for, uh, the, for the argument to start the way it did uh, was wrong, and I know, and I, I, I wasn't happy with that. You, you blamed uh, you Nicole for that, the way the argument started? For the way it started, yes. Not for my actions, but the way it started. My actions I was totally responsible for. Uh, when you, uh, during the three days that you were staying out at your friend's homes, did you talk to Nicole? Yeah. You resolve this pretty quickly. Yeah, but you know, how do you resolve when you when when a relationship got physical like that? It's hard to. I mean, it's it bothered us both. The first time in your uh, words, the relationship got physical. Do you like that? Yes. First, first, first time it ever got physical. Only time. Uh, yes. Are you I mean, when I say only time, I mean it's the only time that we were physically confronting one another. I mean, the coast hit me at times. She has? That was nothing. You know, I don't consider that no big deal. Why not? Because it was, uh, I didn't call the police. And calling the police is a big deal? Yes. Let me make sure I understand something. Um, you, you described uh, at length in your prior testimony uh, that the physical confrontation was wrestling. That was your word. I was right? physically trying to remove her from the okay. bedroom. Now, yeah. is that the only time that you and she had ever wrestled in that way? Yes. Okay. And um, you had never had an occasion, other than that incident, to have a physical confrontation with her where you were trying to restrain her 
or remove her? At one point, she was at, the, uh, at a door, and this is something that Denise spoke about, and she started knocking my pictures and things down, and I grabbed her by her arm and put her out the front door. Where was that, Mr. Simpson? The Rocky Mountain. <coughs> Denise uh, witnessed that? She witnessed that, yes. You, uh, Denise, and Nicole, anyone else? Ed, Ed McCabe. Who's he? Denise's friend? He was a friend of Denise's and mine. Are you still friends with him? Yes. Have you seen him since uh, you've been out of jail? Yes. On how many occasions? Twice. When was the last time? Can I ask a question? Sure. When did you come into town? Sunday. Saturday, Sunday morning. <coughs> did you and Mr. McCabe talk about uh, uh, this incident? This week? No. Uh, and the prior time that you met him? Pardon me? And the prior time that you were with him no. since you got out of jail? No. Oh, wait a minute, Monday. Correct myself. Monday. You're not under oath, don't worry about it. Well, Mr. Leonard. Worry. But since he's, he's But if you want to be, we can take care of that. <laughs> it felt like it's <laughs> put you in the list. Yeah. Okay. I know Mr. Baker likes putting lawyers under oath. Anyway, uh what day was this? What, do you what mean? day was what? Knocking pictures down in front of Denise Ed McCabe. Oh. I was in the early eighties. What pictures was she knocking down? Whatever pictures that were around. At On the, the stairway? Stairway, I had a table in my entry, a uh, armoire that had a lot of pictures on it. She just swiped them all off. Did they uh, get damaged? I don't know. Maybe the frames, maybe the glass. And how far was she from the front door? Mm -hmm. A couple of feet. A couple of feet? Yeah. And was the door open or closed? Open. And you just picked her up? But no, I didn't pick her up. I took her by her arms and just moved her out the front door. While you were, she were yelling at one another? I wasn't yelling. Um, I don't, she may have been saying something, but I, I don't recall. What, what was the uh, disagreement about? I don't, I don't, I really don't know. Don't have any recollection why Nicole no. was upset? No. Why she was knocking the pictures down? No. Is this the only incident that you can recall when um, you, uh, when, when Nicole was throwing pictures down or knocking them down or tossing them or, or damaging pictures and photos? I can't, I can't, I know that I've seen pictures broken, but I can't recall seeing her, her break them, but, I, but it was a, you know, I was in one room, she was in another room. Uh, the only other occasion is I was walking on down the street one day and she drove up and started throwing pictures at me. You were driving down the street? You know? I was walking down the street. Walking? Yeah. What street? Uh, Little Santa Monica. Walking to or from your car? From a restaurant. To your car? Actually, I think I was walking to uh, another store. And um, were you and Nicole having uh, a meal at this restaurant together? No, no. W what was the time frame? Oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe 84. And Nicole came driving by? Yeah. And started throwing pictures? <laughs> I mean, like Frisbee throwing these pictures out. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pictures? Pictures that she had had framed of us and stuff. Uh, this, you know, what the cause of this conflict was? Uh, I was walking out of the restaurant with a guy named Randy England, who I I can't recall, but I think at the time was one of Denise's boyfriends. And as we were walking out of the restaurant, uh, I can't think of her name, but Elaine Young's daughter was walking down, and. We were talking as we walked out, and Nicole showed up, I mean, drove by and just started throwing pictures. Elaine Young's a lady who sold me my house. And, uh, Rockingham. Rockingham. And uh, we weren't with these people. Uh, we were walking to another store, and I don't know what Nicole thought, but she 
frisbee those pictures at us, and she said something very unpleasant to the girl. What'd she say? Oh, you have to ask the girl. I think I... Do you remember? I don't remember. I read it somewhere since when I was in jail. I read it because I had forgotten the incident, and I read it when I was... Uh, what, what was it that you read? I don't know. It was just something that I read when I was... Uh, you don't recall, in, is that right? I don't recall. Okay. Um, did you talk to Nicole after this incident to find out what it was all about? I tried to. And what did she say? She didn't. That was the incident. That was the time she moved out and went to my friends, and I proposed to her the next day. Did Nicole... That's uh, I remember that portion of it. Did, do you know um, how it was that Nicole had framed the pictures in her car? Yeah, she, had, she was having pictures framed. I guess she was picking them up from the framer. Was she moving out? Is that why she had pictures no. in the car? No. She was just framing pictures of ours. I, in our home, there's, our home was like a... A photo album. Nicole was big on pictures and frames, and our every wall in our house had pictures and frames, and we were constantly traveling and doing things, and she was constantly taking pictures and constantly framing pictures. <coughs> were there any other incidents involving her throwing pictures? Not that I recall. She knocked a picture over once. Um, she knocked a couple of pictures over once in 93. But she didn't break them or anything. This is at Gretna Green? No, this is at my home in Rockingham. Uh, what, what was the date of this incident, Mr. Simpson? I would say April of 90, April. And what was the uh, cause of this problem? Uh, I, I, hmm. It was, um, she wanted us to get back together. Uh, I was reluctant. I'd taken a trip with her to, so we can get away at my mother's advice to find out why she wanted to get back together. I spent a few days with her. I came back, uh, and she, my kids were at my house swimming, and she came by and wanted to know why Paula's pictures were still there. And I said, because Paula's my girlfriend. And she says, well, that wasn't going to work. And she slapped the picture and left. But she called and apologized the next day. Was this uh, before you and she had uh, made the agreement under certain ground rules to reconcile? Before I laid the ground rules and agreed to uh, try it for a year, this was about a month, I would say, before that. You say you laid them down? Yes. Isn't it true that you wanted to get back with her? No. As much as she with you? No. She was insistent? Very insistent. And uh, you relented? No. Uh, by, by May, I knew I loved her. I didn't know if I was in love with her. I knew I loved the time that we spent with our kids. And when they followed us down to Kabul that trip, uh, the group of people I was staying with left, and Nicole and the kids asked me could I stay, and I stayed a few extra days, and I truly enjoyed the time that I spent. Uh, Nicole and I was very loving uh, in that time, and it was during that time that I, and that was right around Mother's Day, uh, that I told her that I would try it. So your view of this reconciliation is that you took her back, not that she took you back. Is that right? I don't think anybody took anybody, anybody back. Yeah, I don't think it's a view either. I think it's. I don't think anybody argues, uh, or anybody would argue that Nicole was very insistent, uh, and um, to get back together. And, and and I told her no, the first two or three times, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. Now you said uh, you loved her, but you didn't know if you were in love with her. Yes. Um, during that following uh, year, or the year that ensued, uh, did you ever come to the realization that you were in love with her? Once I came to, uh, it was almost a year, it was uh, either the end of March or the first day or so of uh, April, I, I was surprised that I was at that point finally amenable to them moving back in, and it was the first time that I honestly felt 
that, in my heart anyway, that maybe this would work. And, um, well, and I called Lou Brown and Judy Brown and told them. First time since your divorce that you felt that way? No, the first three months of, uh, oh, my divorce, yes, first time, first time since my divorce, for sure, yes. And first time since Nicole starting, uh, started to pursue you to, to reconcile that you felt that way, right? Well, she pursued me for two and a half months before I relented. say two and a half months and I shouldn't explain this but when I say two and a half months previous to that she had been sending me tapes and cupcakes and stuff but from the day she showed up at my house with letters and tapes and and talking to me about getting back together from that day to the time that I said okay was about two and a half months and how long uh, was she uh, sending messages through the children and cupcakes and things like that before she showed up with the letters and the tapes? It started uh, in late February. Of 1993? Yes. So you'd only been officially divorced five or six months, right? Officially divorced, yes. Yeah. But we had, <coughs> we had gone on with our lives a lot earlier than that. Okay. So from February 93 to about late March, early April? Yes. I, I may have misspoke. When did she show up at your house with the letters and the tapes? Oh, uh, in mid, mid March. Mid March. Mid to late. Uh, you know, it was the latter part of March. I know that. There was a, a letter she wrote you, a long letter. Yes. And uh, and she gave you some videotapes, right? Well, there were our tapes, and there was, you know, she wanted me to look at them. She our, asked me to look at. I'm sorry, they were our tapes. Tapes that she wanted me to look at them. One was a wedding tape. Yeah. And the other one was a children. Wedding tape, yeah, a wedding tape that's never been sold, and uh, a tape of our children. What do you mean never been sold? I never sold it, even though some people want to buy it, but they evidently got somebody else to okay them selling some tapes. Your wedding tapes have been sold. Yes. Do you know who sold? What I know gave the okay. Who? The Browns. <coughs> Let's take a break. We are back on the record now, and the time is approximately 11 16. Um. Was there a particular event um, that sticks out in your mind uh, when Nicole showed up at your house with the letters and the tapes? Yes. What was it? The fact that she showed up, I hadn't seen her in a few months. Between uh, February of 93, uh, when she started to send the cupcakes and the messages for the kids, uh, and until this time she showed up, you were not in contact with her? Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Did not call her? Not did at not all. return messages back to her? Um, I personally did, no. Assuming that there were messages from her. No. She, you said, I think, uh, last session of your deposition, or one of them, that she used to communicate messages with the kids? Yes, or through Kathy Rand. Kathy, that's right. <coughs> um, by the time she showed up at your house um, in this e occasion in March of 93. Mm -hmm. Had you already uh, met Paula? Paula was my girlfriend. Paula was your girlfriend, that's right. You yeah. met her in May of 92, correct? Yes. Okay. In fact, you, you, you know the day, don't you? Roughly, yes. What is it? 22nd of May. Uh, well, I met her before the 22nd. I actually <laughs> met her on like the 12th or 13th. The 22nd of May is when we dated. And you bought her the uh, bracelet as a two-year anniversary, two years later, well, right? Well, for an anniversary date. We hadn't been together for two years, but... Two-year anniversary date? Yes. Okay. Now, um, when she showed up at your doorstep in March of 93, that was uninvited, I take it, right? Yes. And uh, this first time you had seen her in a while? Seen her, yes. 
You spoken on the phone? Yes. About getting back together? No. Uh, just about uh, the kids? No, she had called me right before this. Oh, to? To ask that she needed to talk to me. And when, and you said yes? No. What did you say? I, I said I didn't, I said if it wasn't about the kids, I didn't want to talk. Why were you so adamant about this? Because every time I talked to her in the, well, I was just adamant. I didn't want to deal with her problems because generally when I talked to her, it was about her problems and I didn't want to be involved in her problems. What were her problems at that time? We go back to the, her being pregnant. We went back to her having a problem with some boyfriend. We went back to Thanksgiving. She was having a hassle with a boyfriend and consequently didn't bring my kids uh, to New York after we had agreed on it. Uh, consequently, I had to get lawyers involved to get my kids for Christmas. Consequently, at the last minute, she wanted to come to New York. Um, it was just I just made a decision at one point that if we were going to communicate, it should have been about the kids and outside of the kids. I didn't want any to deal with her. When when uh, did you make that decision? In other words, what was sort of the last straw where you didn't want to communicate with her anymore except about the kids? After Christmas of 93? It wasn't the last straw, just after Christmas, after we had a great time together at Christmas and she called me in the, yeah, after Christmas, after night, Christmas. There was no specific incident. It was all of those incidences and I just made up my mind after she left New York uh, that I would um, only communicate with her when it came to the kids. And that basically held true all of January 93, February 93, and part of March of 93? Correct. <coughs> Did, um, no, let me back up for a second now. During the, the time uh, before she showed up at your doorstep in mid-March of 93, uh, had she ever, um, and after your, the two of you split up, did she ever come talk to you about problems with other men? Yes. Lean on your shoulder, so to speak, ask for advice? That's advice, kind of yes. And about what men did she come talk to you? Twice about Joseph and the pregnancy. And what were the uh, two times about Joseph? Tell me about those incidents. The first, I think she was, she was informing me that she had met a guy that I quote, she was crazy about. Evidently, she had just spent time in Mexico with him. And, but she didn't know. She didn't know if he had uh, really split up with his girlfriend. And so she was, you know, it was her, you know, it was, uh, it was a, her first time, I guess, in her, since 77, that she was getting into a, a real relationship with a person other than me. And she just, I don't think she totally believed that he, uh, that he had split up with his girlfriend or something. And she just was talking to me about it. And what was the other occasion? Uh, I gather at some point in time, someone had told her that I was somewhere with, that I was somewhere and Joseph was with another girl and that I was at this place. And she came over to, to talk to me about that. Well, she didn't come over. We actually went to dinner, I think, and talked about that. It was in the summer or early June, mid-June, maybe. We're into 1992 now, right? Yeah, we're in the summer of 92. So during, during this time period, you and she were split up, not together as a couple, but had a healthy relationship? Yes, yes. And that lasted until things deteriorated in November of 92 over this Thanksgiving incident? Yes, yes, it was very good right up until when she didn't bring the kids back for Thanksgiving and gave me no reason why. Did you ever talk to her about that? I asked her why. And what did she say? She said she just didn't feel like it. Did she tell you why? No, she told me why eventually once uh, we were back together a year or so later. But, what did she uh, say then? She was she was having beef with her, I guess her and her boyfriend, and uh, whenever she talked to me, I was short, and she just said she just just didn't feel like flying to New York, and uh, she just didn't feel like flying to New York. That was that. Who was her boyfriend then? I believe it was Brett. Brett. Yeah.
Did you have a healthy relationship with her uh, from the moment the two of you decided to split up in uh, early 1992 until this point in Thanksgiving time? Healthy, I would say. I, I went through a tough time. I, I didn't want to split up. So for me, I it wasn't healthy for me. But initially, initially you didn't want to split up, but then eventually you reckoned with it, right? When she told me that she was crazy about another guy, there was no reason for me to try to stay in it. <laughs> now, when was that, that conversation? That was uh, the, the night, I believe, we keep getting the Mother's Day. Uh, but it was roughly Mother's Day, or the day after. I believe it was the day after Mother's Day in, uh, in 92. I was at the Browns' house and Nicole showed up real late from Mexico. Who did she say she was crazy about? Joseph. Joseph. So w you said on your video that you and um, Nicole had lunch on January 6, 1992, mm -hmm. where Nicole told you that uh, she wanted to split up. Yes. Okay. And from that point on until this conversation in Mother's Day of 1992, you were of the frame of mind of, of uh, wanting to put the relationship back together, right? Well, you know, I mean, I, yes, I was thrown off. Basically, yes, there was one incident that that may have changed. So what was that incident? The Keith Zonowitz. That was before Mother's Day of 92? Yes. And was that shortly before? A few weeks, I would say. After the Keith Zlomsiewicz incident, did you um, uh, still want to put the relationship back on track? I, it's hard to say. I, I, uh, I just know at the when she told me she was met this guy she was crazy about and and but she didn't know that it was that day that in my mind I moved on emotionally right yes <laughs> and as of Mother's Day of '92 you had not yet met Paula right correct um, the Zalamsewich incident was that the first major setback in your uh, plans to try to win her over again? Well, he didn't say he had plans to no. win her over. He well, your no. desire to reconcile with her. Was the Islam switch incident like the first major setback for you? No, when she moved out, it was a major setback. Well, I understand, but uh, you, you were trying to pursue her and get the relationship back on track. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's hard to, to say. I just know that I accepted it. It was over when she came and spoke to me about uh, Keith. I, at that point in time, I emotionally left. And, and Keith or Brent? Uh, no, no not Joseph. Brent. Or Joseph. Joseph. I'm sorry. Joseph. At that point, we're all. At that point, I moved on. I started. Okay. Uh, you know, I was a. Uh, uh, I was ready to find somebody. The two of you have uh, cordial and positive relations between January 6, 1992 and the uh, Mother's Day of 92 incident? Yes. And continued again through the rest of that year? Yes. Then Thanksgiving things went downhill? Well, I can't say it went downhill, no. i just say at that point in Thanksgiving, lawyers got involved for me to get the kids for Christmas, and uh, we actually had a very very good three or four time, uh, days at Christmas, a, a real good time. <coughs> Did you communicate with her between Thanksgiving and Christmas, 1992? Uh, very little, almost. Uh, if it were, if I communicated with her, it had to do with arranging for the kids, uh, with, you know, after the lawyers had got involved, which day the kids would come back, who would bring them back, uh, because she wasn't coming back. Were you romantically involved with Nicole at all during the year 1992? We had one night. We had a couple of nights. One night she came to my house, and then one night after we had gone to Mezzaluna. The answer to that is yes or yes. no. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. <clears throat> How many? I'm not sure of this, but... Uh, uh, I mean, kissing and stuff. I would say uh, twice. Were, were um, any of them after the uh, Mother's Day 92? No, no. Both before? Yes. Uh, were they both before the Zlomsiewicz incident? Yes, yes. 
So between January and, and the Zlomsowich incident of 92? Yes. Is when you had relations with Nicole in 92? Yes. And thereafter, for the remainder of that year, did not, right? Correct. And, and when, for the first time, did you have relations with her in 1993? I would say... beginning of April, she showed up at my house one night. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I'll get back to that. In, in April of 1993, right? Yes. Okay, now, um, she spent some time with you in Christmas and it went well, you said, right? Yes. That's Christmas 92, that's in New York? Yes. And uh, you were with Paula then, right? Yes. Was Paula with you and Nicole at the same time? No. Was no. Paula part of the, uh, uh, the four days that you spent with Nicole? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Was there uh, any friction between Paul and you over that? A little bit. <coughs> now, uh, had you made any plans to marry Paula? No. You ever proposed to her? No. You and she ever discussed marriage? Marriage, no. And Enga getting engaged? No. Having a family, living mm -hmm. together? Kids, yes. And you discussed this in the year 1992 and up through uh, some point in 93, I take it? I don't know if it ever came up in 92 or in 93. I just, I'm sorry, I asked the question again. Yeah, when did it come up? It didn't, it was never a plan. <laughs> you know, Paula is a, as she stated, Paula's always wanted a family. She wanted the white picket fence. She wanted to get married to you and have a family, right? She never told me she wanted to get married to well, me. Well, she wanted to have a family with you, right? She never told me that, ever. She always just said that, that her dream was always this house with the white picket fence and kids. But you understood that she would have liked to have that with you, right? Well, the longer we were together, I would have assumed that, that eventually I was, yeah. Are yeah. you saying the two of you never talked about that? Never talked about that, no. Never once talked about having kids together? Yes, we talked about having kids and filling houses up with kids. Yes. Did you? But it was. Get it. Was that an affair? <laughs> we talked about that. It was at an affair. Yes. Was that the evening of June 11? Yes. 1994, right? Yes. Now, before that evening, had you ever spoken to Paul about that? Us having kids? Yeah. I don't really think so. Paula, Paula just wants to have kids. She wants to to ha have a simple life and kids and a house and family. When Nicole showed up on your doorstep in March of 1993, how, what was the state of your relationship with Paula? Great. Uh, you had a monogamous relationship with her? Yes. And uh, you, were the two of you living together at any time? No. Did she stay with you often? If she visited me in New York for a few days, she has a very active career, so she was traveling as much as I was. Now, from mid-March of 90, well, when Nicole came to see you in March of 93, what was the reason she told you she wanted to get back together? I'm sorry? When Nicole came to see you in mid-March of 93. After she saw me. Uh, when she came to see you to talk to you, okay. what was the reason she said that she wanted to get back together? Uh, she told me, you know I love you. I have never said I didn't love you. I needed to do the things that I did this year. She didn't like <coughs> her life. She didn't like the people she was hanging around with. She, quote, all the guys are just trying to get in your pants. All the girls I run around with, they're just looking for somebody with money to marry. Everybody's doing drugs. Uh, and I said to myself, I had a good life, I had a good family, and I want to come home. She went on to discuss that evidently she had been going to some therapy, and they had taught her something, and she asked me if I had read a letter that the kids had gave me, which I hadn't. And uh, we were, it was curious because, because she says in the letter she wished we were taking a walk, and I was taking a walk with her at the time. Why hadn't you read that letter the kids gave you? Because they just walked in with it and handed it to me, and then I went looking for where they went, and then I noticed Nicole was parked across my driveway, and I... Did I, she tell you that she regretted the decision to split up with you? No. She said she didn't regret that. And she needed the time that she had. Did she talk to you at all about uh, a abuse by you? No. Did that come up at all in this I conversation? I don't recall that coming up at all. No. What about uh, infidelity? 
in this conversation, her sole purpose was to get back with me. What did you say? Oh, by the way, what people did she say she did not like? She didn't say she said a friend. I didn't know who her friends were. I, you know, I knew Cora, but all these other people who were who we see now, I, I didn't know who these people were. What do you mean were. by these other people, Mr. Simpson? The, the Keys, the CCs, these people, I don't, I don't know these people. CC was not someone who was in your and Nicole's life before uh, you split up? No. Was Cora? Cora, yes. She was, right? Yes. But not CC, right? Not CC. And not Faye Resnick? Oh, no, not Faye Resnick. <coughs> And what about Chris Kardashian or Chris Jenner? We knew Chris uh, Kardashian. I know Chris. They were they were friends because of Bob and I were friends. They never did anything outside of Bob and I. Uh, uh, Nicole wasn't a big fan of, of of all the fingernails and hair and clothes thing. And that Chris was that was Chris's thing. And what about the Shulmans? Were they part of your? circle of friends before you and Nicole split up? At one point, then Nicole had a falling out with uh, the Shulmans, and I believe by the time we split out, Nicole hadn't spoken a word to to Linda in a few years, even though I would see him from time to time. And what about the LeBarons? I, you know, I don't, we saw them maybe once a year. Okay. And when you and Nicole split up in 92, who, who was in your circle of friends, your closest friends? Uh, I would say for Nicole it was Cora. Uh, um, I don't think she saw much of Susie Keel, who has been her closest friend most of the years we were together up to that time. Uh, the Schwartzes. Uh, Alan Schwartz. Yeah, uh, and Pam Schwartz. Uh, and then Nicole's life was more geared around uh, the kids, you know. Those are the main people, though? Yes, I would say they were the main people. When you took vacations, you took vacations with these people? We had in the past, but, yeah, we had in the past. Okay. <coughs> oh, and what did you tell Nicole? Not, not Cora. We, we hadn't taken not vacations with Cora, though. And what did you tell Nicole uh, in March of 93 when she said she wanted to go back? I told her I was in a relationship. And, uh, but essentially, I felt that I, lo I loved her and I always would love her, but I was in a relationship and that I had suggested, uh, I was big on us doing something together as a family once a week. And we had, since I had been back, we hadn't done that. And I said, but I do believe we should at least once a week uh, do something together with the kids. And did, did she accept that? She had no choice. And did you carry out on that plan? Well, what happened, uh, That's the yes, answer. yes, yes. What happened? What do you mean? You said, well, what happened? Well, yes, we did carry out on that plan, but Nicole didn't accept that plan, and Nicole just started showing up everywhere. Uh, against your wishes, you mean? What, when you say against my wishes, I mean... It was it bothering you? Um, to an extent, yes, but not... I mean, it was, wasn't was unpleasant, but it, it got complicated. <laughs> How? Because uh, I'd, I'd be places and be meeting Paula places. Or Paula would come to a golf course and was going to meet me for drinks or something, and Nicole would show up before Paula showed up. Un uninvited? Well, she was going to the driving range. <laughs> it was your sense that she was going there because you were there? <clears throat> well, she told me that. She said if, she, if we got back together and I'm crazy about golf, she wanted to learn how to play golf, so she started taking golf lessons. But are you saying it was a coincidence that she showed up at these places when you were there, or she was trying to meet up with you there? That Jeez. calls for speculation. No. What was your understanding of what was happening? Well, well how could he have an understanding unless she Because he, he can observe human nature. Well, she, know, she knew what time I played golf, and when I was coming off, coincidentally, when I was coming off the 18th green, the, the marshal would say, your wife. I said, my wife? I don't have a wife. Your ex-wife is on the driving range, uh, and I'd go down. Did she show up at any other places where you were besides the golf uh, course? Uh, my house. Uh, Again, uninvited. Yes, but that was nothing because, uh, well, I can't say that was nothing. Quite often was either the kids were at my house or she was coming by to drop something off for the kids or she was dropping the kids off. And, uh, and 
And then it got to be a little more than that. When did that happen? Uh, after we went to Cabo. And how did it get to be a little more than that? Well, she started coming late at night. Without your asking her to? Uh, yes. And while you had Paula there with you? No, Paula. Well, a few times. I, I, I just assume that when she didn't see Paula's car, she wouldn't ring the bell. But if she saw Paula's car, she, uh, I mean, you know, it depends if she knew I was home or Did what. Did she have a key? <coughs> At that time, no. Is the Ashford bell? Yes. Uh, you went to Cabo with her in uh, April of 93? Yes. And the two of you went as a couple? Yes. Who'd you go with? Just her and I. And uh, was you were romantically involved during that trip? In that trip, yes. Yeah, and did your plans for the future change during that trip? I had made up my mind one way or the other. And you were still kind of on this once a week uh, family event? Well, I, yeah, that was still what I wanted it to be, but at this time that wasn't what was happening. Okay, and after uh, Cabo, Nicole started showing up more and more often? Uh, yes. Okay, and uh, <coughs> did she at some point show up in Mexico? Yes. When was that, after the Cabo trip? Yes, that was in May. And who did you go with to Cabo, uh, to Mexico with? Uh, Alan and Gail Austin, Craig and Melissa Baumgarten, uh, I believe Haas, Bob Hoskins went with us, and Corey Wallman. And where'd you stay? At a friend's house. In Cabo? Yes. And Nicole showed up at this house? Well, she called. When I called to leave a number, where I would be. She said, we're coming. I said, what we? do you mean we're coming? And she said, her and her friend and the kids. And I said, well, where are you staying? She said, at a friend's uh, ex-husband had a co-op, which I've read now is a villa, but that's where they were staying. <laughs> this friend was Faye Resnick? Yes. So that, she showed up with Faye Resnick? Yes. And um, Justin and Sydney? Yes. And, and Faye's child? Yes. Uh, Yes. What's her name? I can't recall her name right now. Francesca. Francesca. <coughs> and did you and Nicole see each other during this trip? Yes, I would after I would after golf, I'd drive into town and uh, yes, the answer is yes. When she said she wanted to come down, did you uh, resist that at all? She didn't say she wanted to come down. She said they were going down. Did they you try to, to talk stay. her out of it? No. Okay. And after uh, Cabo came back and she started showing up a lot at your house. Any other places too? No. After Cabo, I came back and uh, and is this just Cabo of May or Cabo of April? Is this the second Cabo trip? Good question, Mr. Baker. I think this is a <laughs> this is after the I'm first. I'm so overwhelmed. The, <laughs> so overwhelmed. <laughs> I can't. This is the first Cabo trip in April of '93. Uh, okay, the first Cabo trip. <laughs> yeah, she, you said that um, from that point on, she started coming over unannounced to your house quite a bit. Yeah, more regularly. More yeah. regularly. Yeah. And did she, did she show up at any other places during that time period other than the golf course? Show up? Yeah. Uh, she came to my office a few times. Uh, Were you telling her not to do these things? No. Okay. In other words, you never said, look, Nicole, you're coming around too often. Please don't do this. No. No. So it, it was uh, not bothering you at all, right? It was uncomfortable, but no, I like my kids, and I've always liked Nicole. So even though it was uncomfortable, you didn't tell her you were uncomfortable about it? <sighs> no. Okay. I, no. And uh, at some point, uh, you then decided to have this uh, reconciliation with her, right? Yes. And that occurred after the second Cabo trip in May of 93? Actually, during the second Cabo trip. Actually, it was during the Cabo trip that I made up my mind that I would give it a shot. Was there anything in particular that caused you to make that decision? I really, after my friends left, Nicole and the kids, Justin kept saying, Sydney and Justin, come on, stay, Dad, stay. And I stayed, and I just really enjoyed myself with my family. Was Faye still there? Yeah. So during that trip, you and she made the agreement that you've previously testified about, right? Yeah, I, I think I came to the conclusion then. I don't know if I worded it to her then. I may have right after I came back, but 
it was at that point in my mind that I said I was going to give this a shot. And your relationship with Paula was good at that time? Yes. Not on the way down? I, I think in the previous month, because Paula came by, I know, and Nicole was there. That's when she met Nicole. Uh, or, and I didn't even know Nicole was there. I was upstairs. Uh, and then I would tell Paula I was having dinner with Nicole and the kids, and it became so, some friction. Uh, but the relationship was still good, but it was friction. There was some friction. Over Nicole? Yeah, I think over the, I, I, I can't recall. It just seemed that sometimes there was a couple of um, conflicts time-wise where Paula wanted to do something, but I told the kids I'd do something. And then Nicole would end up with me and the kids doing something. And, it's uh, fair to say, though, that the conflict that you had with Paula uh, during this time period stemmed from uh, her fear that you might get back together with Nicole? Well, I, you'd have to ask her that. But, well, but you, you I, and she I discussed think, that, yeah, right? I think it had to do with... Uh, but I, I, didn't, I don't think I ever discussed with her about getting back to Nicole until after I made up my mind, and then I discussed it with her. But then before, I told, you know, we talked about it. Before that time, though, you and Paula had discussions of where she was unhappy about Nicole being in your life. Is that a fair statement? I, I, I can't I don't recall it specifically having a conversation about Nicole being uh, in my life. I do know that it was uncomfortable and Paula was uh, wasn't happy when Nicole was coming around a lot. Okay. And what? How did Paula take it when you told her? You know, she she you know Paula's got a lot of pride. She I'm sure she was hurt. She didn't show that hurt at that time. Uh, she was uh, very supportive of me at the, verbally about getting my family uh, back together. I think she was very skeptical that it would work. Uh, but she was, it was, um, it was, um, I, I, you know, I, it was painful to do it, but, but I think she was supportive, but hurt, and so was I. <coughs> and where was this when you told her? I, I believe we, we were at her house, and I think we went to Ladone for lunch, and it was right at that, right around then. May 93? May 93, I believe it was. Now, from that point on, I, you saw her only one, one time? I think I saw her twice. Twice? Yeah, I think I ran into her one other time. Yeah. Until you got back together with her in... Uh, yeah, yeah. May of 94, right? Yes. So you only saw her twice in that ensuing year, correct? Yes. And not romantically involved with her at all? No. Okay. And didn't speak to her on the phone? I may have spoke to her a few times on the phone, because I know a few times I would call Kathy and Paula be on the phone. I know a few times I would run into someone who lived in Panama City and I'd call her mother, uh, and I believe on one of those occasions she was there, uh, or was coming the next day and I'd call the next day to talk to her. Uh, but uh, I, if it was three or four times in, in, in that year, it would have been the most. Paula, Paula called. I know the day Marcus was getting married, uh, um, you know. Did she write to you? No. And you to her? No. When you were in New York during the August football season, 1993, did you see Paula? No. <coughs> why did, pa did Paula tell you why she was skeptical that your re reconciliation would work? I don't know. No, I don't think she explained it. I think she it was a more of an attitude than she said it. But I was skeptical, <laughs> so so it was. She didn't ask you if you were skeptical. Okay. <clears throat> no, she didn't. I can't recall any specific thing. I think it was just more an attitude. Did you decide to get back to, together with Nicole essentially for the kids? I mean, that'd be the easy thing, but I don't think so. I think I didn't know how I felt about Nicole. I, I truly didn't know how I felt about Nicole. I knew that when we split, I was in love with her, and I knew I would have never left her at that point in our relationship. And I was, uh, 
you know, I had to I had to try to understand how I felt, and the kids obviously was in the mix, but I think it was about myself first. Now, over the next year, you saw Nicole uh, on a monogamous basis, right? Yes. And then split up with her the day after Mother's Day of 1994. Is that right? We've been through all of this ad nauseum. Um, well, let me see. Let's, I got to back up here a little bit. For the next year, I saw Nicole. We didn't date other people. Uh, I never asked her what she did. She never asked me what I did. Okay. It was, it was, uh, we were going, we were working on getting our relationship back together. What I want to know is during that next year, from May of 93 to May 94, how many times did you break apart, split up, call it off, and then get back together again? There were two occasions that I, I was dead set on ending it, but it never happened. And those two were when? Uh, the argument that's now the infamous uh, 911 call. October 25, 93. Yeah, and there was one other occasion. I believe uh, there was one other occasion. When was that? It was early on. It was, uh, it was um, early on. It was in 93. Early in the reconciliation period, Well, right? relatively early. It was in 93, I know that. What happened? I, I, something was in the National Enquirer, and then I was out with Nicole, and uh, I believe Faye and Christian, and it was all in the same kind of period of time. Uh, they were comparing notes about maybe Joseph or something, and I just, you know, I was kind of missing Paula, and I just didn't feel, I, I wasn't, I didn't feel I was in love with Nicole, and I just didn't like what was going on. Was this at the California Sushi? That was the dinner that they were discussing the Scott Joseph. And I it, believe it was Joseph, I may be wrong there. I guess whatever the guy they were discussing, they both had had this guy. And, uh, and it was, I was in, I didn't know what she was a customer hanging around, but I was in shock that in front of me, they would be having this conversation. Did you start uh, arguing with her at the no, table? No, I, I said I left, I left. I didn't argue at the table at all. Was it a table? I believe we left the sushi bar and went to a table, yes. And no argument with her? Got up and left? I got up and said, I can't believe, I don't know who the hell you think I am. I either asked Chris to pay the bill or gave him some money, and I worked out. That's, that's all that happened from your account of it, is that right? Inside, they came out and was trying to talk me into, you know, coming back in and stuff, but I was leaving. Did you have any argument with her outside? About coming back in, and I said I wasn't coming. I said, I can't believe, who the hell you think I am? You know, uh, you guys can be talking about this. I don't know what your other boyfriends did, but you know, you got me confused with somebody. <laughs> so are you saying that in a loud, angry voice outside? I don't know. I'm loud all the time, man. So when you tell me a loud, an angry voice, I think it's the way I talk. Did other? Did you observe whether other people were hearing what you were saying? I don't believe so. No, no, there was no crowd around. It was just the four of us. I think a police car drove by at one point. Were you drinking that evening? Yes. Were you drunk? No. Now, what upset you at the table? Other than what he just told you about? Well, you said something they were talking about Joseph. I, I think it was Joseph. Yes. It was well, what some guy they both had screwed. Why, why would her talking about Joseph upset you? Well, I think if your wife and a girlfriend was talking about some guy that both of them screwed, you'd get up and leave. <laughs> if you don't, I or think were you they would talking talk. about having sex with Joseph? Well, whatever the guy was, I believe it was Joseph. They both had screwed this guy, and they were talking about sex with this guy. Well, that's what I'm asking you. Did they just mention the name Joseph or were they talking about sex with Joseph? They were talking about sex with a guy. I'm assuming it was Joseph. I don't have any clear recollection it was Joseph, but it was a guy that they both had had. And when they were kind of comparing notes about it... In your presence? I was, I was in shock. <laughs> when they, when Nicole and Faye were doing this, right? Yes. And were they doing it just talking to one another, not to you and Christian? Well, the four of us were sitting at a table, the four of us, and this is a conversation that was going on, and I looked at Christian, and he kind of did something, and... Did you use profanity at Nicole in the restaurant before you no, got up? No, I don't think I said anything except, I said, well, I may have said, you know, who the hell you think I am? <laughs> you have this conversation in front of me. Did, did you I'm read Faye here. Resnick's account of this incident in her book? 
I may have. Yeah, I, I did read her book. Yeah, I know you did. Mm -hmm. um, she said that you uh, were screaming and yelling and using profanity at the table. Is that true? I don't believe so, no. And she said you uh, followed her down to the uh, ladies' room? No, that's wrong. She said you barged into the ladies' room, kicking the door open, going inside? That's wrong. Said you made a big scene in front of the patrons and the restaurant manager? That's, uh, she, she said that, yes. Yeah, is that true? No. Uh, you drove home separately from Nicole that evening? Yes. And did N Nicole get driven to rocking? Oh, Nicole was at Gretna Green, then, yes. and you went back to rocking yes. him? Okay. Now, after that incident, did you and Nicole not see, see each other for a while? No. We saw each other almost immediately. Okay. In both those incidents... Um, uh, both those incidents? You, you, the 1025. 1025 okay. and this uh, California sushi bar incident. Yeah. Um, was it Nicole who, after those incidents occurred, came to you and, and sort of apologized and wanted to put things back together again? Most certainly at the sushi bar. I think it was a joint thing at the, uh, the other one. I think uh, I... I, uh, I think we both apologized to each other at the uh, second one, and I was, um, um, I, I may apologize for being loud, uh, but certainly not apologize for the content. Loud at what incident? 93. <coughs> The sushi bar is it? No, no, no. The uh, 911 is. You apologize for being loud. Yeah, I, you know, it, you know, it's, it was an argument. It was a, but I don't apologize for why I was arguing. You know? Okay. Um, did you also have an incident involving Nicole at the uh, Harley Davidson Cafe opening in October of '93 in New York City? No. Uh, you you attended that with Christian Reichardt and Faye Resnick? Yes. And uh, shortly before that uh, event, uh, there, an article appeared in the National Enquirer about you and Nicole? I don't believe so. Uh, any tabloid article come out around that period of time that upset you at all? Not that I'm aware of, no. Yeah, did you have any disagreement with Nicole either that evening or the next evening at your place in New York? I think the next evening, uh, Nicole was upset that a friend of mine and Faye were on the phone late that night. And Is that Mark Packer? Mark Packer, yes. <coughs> Who was on the phone with Mark? You Thanks. and she was upset with you. Yes, that's yes. And I kept saying she's your friend. Why are you pissed at me? Because he's your friend. So what does that got to do with us? So did the two of you have a loud argument that evening? It wasn't loud because she went to bed immediately. She said something. I said, well, so why are you pissed at me about this? That's your friend you brought back here. I don't. I didn't bring her back here. She talks to who she wants to talk to. Was that the extent of the evening? Yes. Of oh, the incident, I mean. Yeah, we were home, and it was like she had just made warmed up some pasta for me, and then. Now you did attend the opening of the uh, Harley Davidson yes. Cafe, right? Yes. And you were at a table with uh, Resnick, Christian, and uh, uh, Nicole. I don't know if we ever got a table, but we may have at one point sat down. The place was like sardines; okay. it was so packed. And did you consume cocaine that evening? No. Did you take cocaine in front of uh, Nicole, Faye, no. or Christian? Absolutely not. Did any of, uh, of them take cocaine? I didn't observe anybody taking cocaine. Okay. And what about at your apartment that evening or the next evening? Did Absolutely you take cocaine not. there? Absolutely not. So, okay. Was there an incident uh, in which you had a, a a disagreement or a fight with Nicole at a restaurant called Toscana's? No. Do you, do you recall that incident as described in Faye Resnick's book? Yes. Were you present there? Yes. Present there when? At, uh, the incident. The incident, the incident. described? Yes. Yeah. What's your recollection of the incident? Well, well he doesn't... I don't think that was an incident. <laughs> I saw her book. I was surprised at it. But, I mean, you read Discovery. You see what everybody else does. Say. Jeez. So what she said about that is false? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Resnick also um, wrote in her book and testified uh, under oath that uh, you called her on May or two, May two or, or May three of 1994, to um, from Puerto Rico or from no withdrawn. Ms. Resnick testified under oath that she, you called her on May 2 or May 3, a telephone call with her. Uh, do you recall that? 
No, no. not particularly, no. She said that in this call, um, you were ranting and raving about Nicole, um, having made a decision to leave you uh, while you were in Puerto Rico. You recall discussing that with Faye Resnick? No. And in this conversation, you um, told Faye that uh, you would kill Nicole. Do you recall saying that? Absolutely not. Recall having any conversation with Faye Resnick uh, uh, about killing Nicole, even if you didn't mean it seriously? None. Absolutely none. Ever. Uh, you ever discuss that with Christian Reichardt? Never. Did you ever discuss uh, Faye's account of that with Christian Reichardt? Account of what? Account of that conversation that I just described to you. What conversation? It was Where never you... a conversation. Uh, so it was never a conversation. I don't. I don't. I you answered I, the question. No. I don't. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I've talked about a few things with Christian, but I don't recall that being any. Point thing. Did you and Faye have a conversation on the telephone around May 2 or May 3 uh, when you were very angry about Nicole and told so uh, to Faye? No, this is 94. Excuse me, did I say 93? You didn't say any year. <clears throat> I don't know about angry. I was uh, concerned about what the heck was going on with Nicole, which I, I know I have expressed to Faye and I expressed to the Browns. <coughs> And what, are you saying that you think you had a telephone conversation with, with Faye Resnick around this time when you expressed that to her as well? I'm pretty sure I, if I spoke to Faye during this period of time, I would have expressed that, yes. So this is before you uh, made the decision uh, to leave Nicole for the last time, right? Well, when I came back from Puerto Rico, I had made that decision, but Nicole and I had a conversation, and it went for another week. Okay. Before you, um, well, why did it go another week, by the way? because uh, there was a suggestion to date or, you know, take Wednesdays and Saturdays and see how that worked. And uh, so, and I was, uh, that's why, basically, and, and Nicole was considering going to therapy. But by the end of the week, she it just didn't work. So she was considering it. I told her that. I, I thought she should try back to whoever she was going to before she came to ask me to come back in a relationship because I thought she was as healthy as I had seen her during that period of time and I didn't feel that she was too healthy at this time. The conversation uh, that you just described where uh, you asked her to go to therapy was the conversation in Mother's Day 1994, right? Um, that conversation was, a, was an extension to when I first got back from Cabo, that conversation, it wasn't a suggestion, it was a, a either or. And the Mother's Day conversation? Yeah. And as of the end of Mother's Day, the decision was she wasn't going to therapy and that was the end of the relationship? I think it was either Mother's Day or once again the day after Mother's Day. I don't recall what, which night it was. Now the prior conversation with Nicole, the week yeah. before, was where? Uh, at her house. Okay. What was the day of that conversation? Whatever the the day after I got back from Cabo, from Puerto I mean, Rico. From Puerto Rico. Yeah. <coughs> you got you got back for Christian Reichardt's party, right? I got back because of we had to shoot in L.A. No, but you went to the party, in other words. Yes. So that party was on April 30, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And uh, had you had the conversation with Nicole uh, that you just mentioned before that party? No, I think it was the next day. Okay. And relate that conversation to me. Um. Nicole had some concern about why why I wasn't loving and um, and my words to her was I, I, I couldn't I didn't think I can can do this I didn't know when I was in Puerto Rico Nicole was like having a nervous breakdown and I had no I couldn't understand why I didn't understand what it was about and I was explaining to her that you know all of this calling me saying you're sorry I went three weeks talking to you I didn't know who I was talking to from day to day and uh, I can't do this when the call said uh, she went we, she was questioning why she you I wasn't so loving, loving her you mean at the party oh, <coughs> you know loving I'm, I'm always been a very affectionate person it was it, it was almost a, com a, a culmination of a of some of the whole year it was just that I 
I just never fell back in love with her, even though I felt I was in love with her a couple of times. I never really fell back in love with her, and, and I thought it would, as I told you before, I thought before I went to Puerto Rico was the first time that I thought it would work. And while I was in Puerto Rico, I mean, Nicole's, her words were she was having a nervous breakdown. Nicole, uh, did Nicole describe to you when you came back to Los Angeles what her problems were while you were in Puerto Rico? No. No, but ever, evidently there was something was going on. Did she tell you that whatever it was, she was over it? Basically, she laid some of it off on Cora and some of it off on Faye. What did she lay off on Cora? That Cora was, something was going on with Cora and Ron Fishman. Ron had moved out. Faye was uh, messing with drugs. So her preoccupation with her problems was causing her a lot of stress in her life? I, I don't know. Is That's that what, what she, she told you? me, yes. And uh, did you find that a reasonable explanation no. for, her for her behavior? No. Why not? Why? Why should whatever was happening to these women affect the way her and I was with each other? And you told her that? Yes. Now, during that week, uh, when you got back and went to Reichardt's party and the Mother's Day, mm -hmm. decision not to see her anymore, okay? Yeah. You had conversations with Faye Resnick on the phone, right? Earlier in the, maybe, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't totally recall, but I knew I had spoken to Faye a few times uh, because Faye, yeah, I spoke to Faye a few times. Now, apart from expressing to Faye your concerns over Nicole, did you, did you ever express or vent any anger about Nicole? No, not any anger, not to, to the degree that you okay. mentioned earlier, no. Are you aware that Christian uh, Reichardt told the uh, LAPD or the district attorney's office, whoever interviewed him, that Faye told him, you told Faye you were going to kill Nicole? Uh, I think I read that somewhere. It doesn't matter. You no, read that someplace? I'm sure I did. Did you ever talk to a Christian Reichardt about uh, <clears throat> his conversation with Faye Resnick to that effect? No. Did you uh, know that he went on national television and said the same Don't thing? Don't answer that. Well, did, do you know that he did so? Because what? my next question is going to be, did you talk about it? He, you just ask him that if he talked about it, well, and it's irrelevant. This might jog his recollection. It's irrelevant what he saw on television. No, he, but it might uh, refresh his recollection as to whether he talked with Reichardt about it. Did no. you talk to Reichardt? That, you can no. answer that. No. 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 <laughs> We have to take it, do a tape change right here. Why don't we do a lunch change? Okay. I got to take a leak. Uh, over the lunch break, I refreshed my uh, memory a bit on this Toscana incident, Mr. Simpson. Uh, do you know uh, a man named Alessandro? I've uh, met him, yes. And uh, did you see him uh, at Toscana's the evening you were there with Nicole? Yes. He walked into the restaurant and you spoke to him that evening? No. Did he walk up to the table? No. Did you have any words with him at all? No. Uh, did you threaten him? No. Did you uh, talk about him? Mm, Nicole did. What did she say to you about him? Her, I think they were talking about the whole table. Her and one of the other girls was talking about something he had done at one of her parties. That's the best you can recall? Yeah, well, they, they were unhappy with him that he had done something at one of, uh, at, a, at some affair Nicole had at her house and Nicole was very unhappy with it. And you had no conflict with him that evening? No. Okay. Now, at the, uh, first or second session of this deposition, you mentioned uh, an incident involving Nicole in January of 1994. Yes. What was that incident? Nicole, uh, they were leaving a bar, and I gather, I'm, I'm only saying what Nicole told me, uh, at some point Faye was serving her something, and when Nicole was leaning over to ingest it, she ran into the car in front of her. Oh, in the car Nicole was driving? Yes. And Nicole leaned over to ingest some alcohol? No. Was it drugs? Yes. Cocaine? Yes. And uh, she smashed into the car? In front of her, yes. And what car was Nicole driving? Her Ferrari. 
And was the car damaged? Very bad. How did you find out about this? Nicole called me. That evening? I believe it was the next day. Within, within 24 hours, we talked. I asked her how she was doing, and she started crying. She thought she was going to get in trouble. What happened to the car in front that it hit? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Did you take care of this situation for her? No. Uh, uh, her concern was they lied to the police. And um, she thought she'd get caught. <laughs> oh, she switched seats with uh, Faye? No, when they got out and the police came, Nicole thought her license was suspended. And she said she had been drinking. And Faye said she could handle it. And Faye claimed she was driving. And Nicole thought that one of the people, when they left, would, I guess the police was talking to other people when they drove off, when they left with the tow truck. And Nicole thought one of these people would say that she was driving. Did that ever happen? I don't think so. Faye had some lawyer who evidently helped them out in these type of things, and Faye got this lawyer involved. Did you have to pay for anything? No. Who paid for the repair of the um, oh, I don't car. know who calls business. I'm probably her insurance. Okay, you gotta wait till he finishes a question. Okay. <coughs> you ever aware of any uh, tires on uh, Cole's cars being slashed or cut? No. Ever hear about that? No. You know how much it cost on this property damage to the other car? The other car, no. I know Nicole told me hers was... He didn't ask you oh, no, I don't know. about Nicole's car. Okay, I don't know. What I didn't get involved. Nicole's other car? than other than saying I would have dinner with the lawyer, I didn't get involved. And what about Nicole's car? How much was that? I believe she told me uh, in the neighborhood of $20,000. And the insurance company paid for it? I believe so, yes. And the drugs were never disclosed to the police, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, no. It Faye said she had been drinking? I don't know what she yeah. said, but Nicole talked constantly about how Faye was able to go through all the tests, and she said, I could have never done that. Now, did you have any concern about this incident after it was related to you? Yes. And what was that? I was real upset with Nicole. She didn't want anybody to know, and I, I, I was very upset with her. What were you upset about, that she had taken cocaine? It's just the whole thing. Just, it just seemed as if things were happening that should not have been happening. And I, I was talking to her quite extensively during this period of time about drinking. Did she, um, in, in your estimation, cut down on the drinking thereafter? You mean? After this incident. Okay, I know after, but... For the whole period of time until uh, yeah. the murder? Yeah, until her murder. I, I don't think so, because I know it was a constant concern that I mentioned to the Browns, Lou and Judy, from time to time. Uh, even during your marriage, you mean? No, no. This is, all of this is after, you know, after we had split. And uh, when, when you got back together in, let's say, May of 93, Mother's Day of 93, thereabouts, did you start noticing uh, the success of drinking? Almost immediately. And also drug use, too? No. Uh, did you ever see Nicole during that period of time, May of 93, till you broke up in the following year, use cocaine? No. And did you know whether she was doing so, other than this one incident in January of 94? Uh, other than what she told me. And what was she telling you in this regard? Well, the 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 93 October 911 call that's essentially one of the major things that I was uh, I had found out that things were going on and that was essentially what I was yelling about but that wasn't about drug use by Nicole yes in what sense in the sense that I was told that day about them all doing drugs at a place called a monkey bar other than that nine, uh, October 25, 93 incident and the January uh, car crash incident, uh, did Nicole relate to you any other inc incidents of drug use by her? No. And you witnessed firsthand excessive drinking by her? What I thought was, uh, yes. And you talked to her about it? Mm, well, you know, I, didn't, I may have mentioned it to her. I did mention it to her a few times, but I didn't want to be getting on her, so I 
talk to other people in hopes that they would talk to her. And the other people were Judy and Lou Brown? And Faye Russell, for that matter. Um, when did you talk to the Browns about this? I mentioned it numerous times. Watch how much she's drinking. Watch it. Count the drinks that she takes. And you mentioned it to them um, more than one occasion? Yes. From May of 93 to May of 94? Mm, I can't say exactly May to 93 to May of 94. Well, that's the period of your reconciliation. Yeah, within that time period. I don't know when it started or when it ended. I do know that in my last few conversations with J Judy, it was the my major focus on that and, and, and who she was running around with. Okay, let, let me ask you, uh, well, first of all, what was their reaction to your, the expressions of your concern about Nicole's excessive drinking? Well, it was hard to have a reaction because it, the, you, you'd have to ask them what their reaction was. In other words, did they agree with you? Did they say, you're right, OJ, but I can't do anything about it? Or did they disagree with you? What did they well, say? Well, because I kept saying, watch her when we go out. I mean, I, I remember at Lou's, gave a party for Lou one night at a restaurant, and I was saying, watch how much she drinks. Okay. Now, <coughs> you talked about uh, some of the last conversations that you had with Judy. Uh, when did those occur? Um, the last? Yeah. Basically, uh, with the concern was when I was in Puerto Rico. And, and again, the concern was you didn't know why Nicole was acting strangely, right? Well, Nicole said she felt she was having a nervous breakdown. I'm, and she told me that, and then Judy and I had conversations, and Judy had concerns also when did, I was speaking to Judy. Did you consider coming back from Puerto Rico? No. To address the problem? No. Why not? Because I was working. I was under contract, and Nicole was an adult. Uh, did you see if she could get some medical help? I asked her to. I kept telling her I wanted her to go to therapy, and I mentioned about her drinking. Did she say that one of the things that was stressing her out was you? At that time, no. Her relationship with you? At that time, no. Later on, she tell you that? No. You said at that time. That, that suggested to me that at some other time yes, she told you? Yes, we split originally. No, I'm now talking about uh, April 94, when you were in Puerto Rico, and she's telling you she's having a nervous breakdown. Yeah, she was just, I was just, from day to day, she was There's just, no question. Right? Oh, He's okay. just uh, telling no. you where he's directing well, your attention. Exactly. Yeah. And, and my question to you is whether uh, in any of the conversations then or thereafter about her problem, this nervous breakdown problem, that uh, there was any uh, concern expressed by her that you were a cause of this? Uh, no. That it had something to do with you? No. She couldn't pinpoint what it was, she said. You mentioned Cora and you mentioned Faye and her concern with their problems. Does anything else come to mind? Well, it does. Uh, Anything else come to mind? Could you be more well, expansive? Well, he understands what I mean. Well, I, no, don't answer that. That question is what, very overbroad. What I'm trying to get you to tell me as expansively as possible is what she told you was the cause other than her concern over Cora and Faye, which you yourself indicated shouldn't have led to this kind of problem. The problem was she couldn't say. She didn't know. And when I would say, what's wrong? She couldn't say. I don't know is what she'd say. Did you say, is it me? Numerous times. I know I was the easiest problem she had because if, if she didn't want to be with me, I didn't want to be with her, you know? So I wasn't a major problem. But she so said it was not you. She didn't say it was that. She said it was just everything she didn't know. And that's when I constantly she, tried to get her to go to therapy again. She didn't know. So as far as you know, then it might have concerned you, but you, she didn't know, right? No, don't answer that. In other words, she didn't rule out the possibility that it, that it concerned you, is that right? <laughs> she didn't know, so I don't know what she ruled in or out. Okay, she didn't know. Um, did you suggest any uh, modification in your relationship with her in order to uh, alleviate the problem? This is in Puerto Rico. No. Okay. Now, uh, Going back to uh, Judy, you last spoke to Judy when? I don't know. Not at the recital beforehand. I, I don't know. Beginning of May, I would say. And you said the major focus was on Nicole's problems? Yeah, on Nicole and that we were going our s separate ways and, and Nicole. What I thought she needed to get back to therapy and stop drinking and stop running around with who she was running around with. And what did Judy say to you? Judy didn't like who she was running around with either. You mean girlfriends? Yeah. Faye Resnick? That's Judy. Do, who did you mean? I just meant everything. I didn't know who she was running around with. I knew 
I didn't know really who she was running around with, so I, I didn't know. I just knew the whole scene wasn't a positive scene, and from what I can gather, it was the same scene that she was in when she came back to me and told me she hated what was going on in her life. So from what I was gathered, she was going to the same places and, and hanging around the same people. <coughs> now, uh, did uh, Judy Brown tell you that she agreed or disagreed with what you were saying? Uh, she agreed something was wrong because she had some, some she, she, did, she couldn't get anything out on the call. I guess, yeah, Judy was concerned. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta ask Judy. Judy was concerned. Did Judy tell you that she also uh, was trying to find out from Nicole what, what the problem was? She said she wouldn't talk. I think Nicole hung up on her at one time, and, and Judy, at one point, while I was in Puerto Rico, that, uh, at the last week I was in Puerto Rico, uh, made a comment to the effect that she had spoken to Nicole one day, and the next day, Nicole was attributing things to Judy that Judy hadn't said the day before. Uh, something in that, that vein. Did there come a time when uh, you perceived that uh, Nicole stopped acting in this sort of irrational way you're describing? I'll, I'll get asked that again. I don't, I don't quite understand it. From the time that you first started experiencing these problems with her behavior while you were in Puerto Rico, yeah. Beginning with that time, uh, did there come a time when you saw that there had been improvement and that she had stopped exhibiting these problems? From the time I got home, everything seemed, even before I came home, she called, I mean, we talked, and she apologized for the way she was ask, acting. She picked me up at the airport. She seemed totally normal. The <coughs> following Sunday, which was the night before Mother's Day, she in front of me, almost had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I mean, she was looking at me, as you were saying. And, uh, and that was when I basically said, this, this is not gonna work. And from that point on, did you observe that her behavior, whether it was I didn't see problematic it, I, or whether she- I, I saw her that week at dinner once or twice. I talked to her because now we weren't together. So I could talk to her more fully about it. And I talked to her a lot about it the following week when she called me when she had double pneumonia, and I used that as a C. <laughs> See, I told you so. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, you got to stop doing. And that, from that point on, she seemed okay to you. I didn't. I didn't hardly. I didn't see her much from that point on, and until she called me, um, and later in the month, yelling at me, she seemed like Nicole. The times that I saw her. Seemed like she, in other words, she was okay. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, she okay. was okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> tell me about this incident then. You mentioned it on your videotape mm -hmm. when Nicole called you and was very upset with you because Faye Resnick was going to an affair. Mm -hmm. what, what was the affair? Uh, it was going to be the Cedars uh, child, you know, it was a big affair that they have a Cedars hospital raise money for birth defects. I was one of the, you know, founders of it and I was a guy who was in charge of getting all the athletes at, it, at its ex inception and we may have been going into the 8th, ninth, 10th year. And um, so that was the affair. And uh, describe the argument you had with Nicole. It wasn't really an argument. She called me and just started yelling at me. For no reason? I felt for no reason. What'd she say? Uh, to stay away from her effing friends and I said what are you talking about and she said you invited Faye and Christian to this thing and I don't want you I don't want you hanging around my friends and I said I didn't invite Faye anywhere Faye invited herself and she says but I don't want you hanging around my friends and and I think I said to her what are you talking about I never told you who to hang around what are you and I may have made a, 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 a I don't know what I said but in any event she hung up and um, then I call Chris and Faye. Well, did you go to the event? I was in jail. Oh, this was an event scheduled for later in June? Yeah, yeah. You had June, maybe. <laughs> had you made plans with uh, Rick, Christian, and Faye? I, I had invited, see, the previous year. Go ahead. You know. No, had you I had made plans with Christian, and Faye wanted to know why she wasn't, wasn't invited. 
and and gave a good reason why she wanted to go. And I said, well, sure, I don't have a problem with it. What was the reason? That she's, we don't take sides. Uh, we love you. We love Nicole. I want to get to know Paula. I want to get to know whoever uh, Nicole goes out with. When our friends split up, we don't take sides, which has always been my attitude. So you, you that had was no, what she said to me. Yeah, and you had no problem with that, right? No, I mean, I didn't invite her or Cora because I was going to be with Paula. Uh, so the way you left it then um, was fine. Is fine. You were going to go with Paula, Christian, and Faye, and was yeah. Cora going with Ron Fisher? No, Ron and his son was gone, and I had to fill up my table. It's a table okay. of twelve. But Nicole wasn't included, right? No. Nicole and I wasn't, wasn't dating. No, I was okay. dating Paula. What's the date of this conversation with Nicole? I don't know. It was it was, it was after the twenty second, mm. but I believe before the end of the month. So it was sometime. I, I, Sometime in the latter part of May. Uh, <coughs> Just the last argument you had with her? I believe it was, yeah. Yeah, it was the last, other than tickets and stuff. It was the last, yeah. Did you call her back? I don't think it was enough. I tried to call her back, but she had her phone off the hook, and I left a message for her. Where? The next day. Oh, on her machine? Yes. What was your message? I told her I thought she was totally out of line. Uh, I told her that we had... I said, we split up, we went our separate ways, I was there for you when you were sick. I thought everything was going good, you are totally out of line uh, for what you did. You need to talk to your friend, uh, Faye, and, uh, and I said, you need to look at your own actions when you and I were split before. You went a little further than just inviting my friends out, <laughs> and that was it. You mean she had romantic relations with your friends? Yes. <coughs> Um, did she ever respond to that message, Mr. Mm -hmm. Simpson? No. Okay. Now, you testified early on in the deposition that you had a dinner with her and Sydney and Justin at uh, Bundy around the 24th of May. Yeah, yeah. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, was this uh, argument with Nicole before or after that after. dinner? It was after? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, after you took care of Nicole when she had the, uh, was it double pneumonia? Yeah. Was there some still hope in your mind that maybe things would work out? No. You were just doing it to get her better, right? I and mean, we, 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 yeah. Weren't yeah. you delivering roses to the house? On her birthday, I might have, but I don't think so. I think I brought her a cake and a cigarette lighter. Did you have any flowers sent to the house? I did on the, I may have on the 26th. So it would have been a little after the 20. I may have. Oh no, I may have on the 20, on the 24th or the 27th. I may have. For what purpose? That was what I and her always. No, I didn't. I didn't. That would have been the next month. I was going to do that. So I don't. I don't think I did. <coughs> what was Unless the purpose Sydney that you? Graduating. Excuse me. <coughs> Unless Sydney was graduating or something. Yeah. What was the purpose for which you would exchange flowers that time of year? That's when we first met, and it would have been June 27. I brought flowers to her when she had pneumonia. I know that. Once? I believe so. But okay. you know. Was there any expression to, uh, by you to her that you wanted to uh, get back together? No. Okay. The minute I started dating Paula, that was that. <laughs> so. When you saw her at the airport that yeah. night? Yeah. And did you give Nicole any gifts during the month of May other than the... Um, Cigarette lighter and the bracelet? Uh, no. You brought her no gifts? No. When Nicole returned the bracelet, she also returned some earrings? No, I asked for the earrings. Why'd you ask for them back? Because she kept the check. What check? The insurance check. Why was there, was there an insurance check? Because she somehow lost these earrings that I had made for her before. Uh, and when the insurance check came, I signed it and we sent it to her and I we were replacing the earrings, and evidently when the guy delivered the earrings to her, she never gave him the money, and for some reason, my office, when the guy billed my office, they sent a check, so she couldn't keep the earrings and the check. <laughs> How much was the check? I think <coughs> the check was a little less than what the earrings cost, so the check may have been $7,500, $8,000. How did you get the earrings back? I asked for them. Did you pick them up in person? Uh, well, we were, we were discussing some things at her house. And uh, it was when she brought up the fact that um, 
she didn't think I bought these this bracelet for her. How'd and, she uh, figure that out? Because it didn't go with anything I've ever bought her. And it's just, it just was kind of out of the blue. And uh, during that conversation, she mentioned how she's gotten used to the TV in the bedroom. She wasn't a big person on that and wanted to know could she keep the TV I had bought for me in the bedroom that had the earphones on it because I watched TV throughout the night uh, and a few other items. And that's well, since we're making up, you owe me X amount of dollars. And she didn't have it and she gave me the earrings. She said, well, you have to take the earrings because I don't have the money. Do you know why she didn't have the money? I don't know. I know she was having some, at that particular time, uh, she had loaned some family, from what she said, she had loaned some family members some money. And uh, I don't know. Uh, outside of that, I don't know. How much had she loaned? I don't know. I thought she said 10000 or something, too. To whom? I believe she said Lou. <coughs> so she said she was short on money? She didn't say that. She was just, I know money was a, a um, came up in the conversation because she didn't have the money to pay me to give me the money back for the for the check. Okay. Now, did she give you the earrings back the same time she gave you the bracelet back? Uh, yes. And and was that uh, uh, on this 24th when you were over there no, for dinner? No, I believe it may have been earlier than that. It may have been the 20. It may have been on the 22nd. It may. I believe it was like on. Whenever I got, I think it was. I, I'm not 100 percent sure of this. But I think it was like on the 22nd. I think it was the night of the picnic at my house. But it could have been a day after that or something. Because was I she upset think... with you when she returned the bracelet? Here? No, she was up. She had bothered her because she really, really loved the earrings. Uh, so that bothered her. But I was going to give them back to her anyway. So you were planning to give them back? Yes. At what point? Uh, the next month when our anniversary had come. <coughs> Why didn't you let her keep them at the time? Well, because then I wouldn't have to buy her anything at our anniversary. Did you buy her a present for your anniversary in 1992 when you were split up in June and you had already met Paula? I think I gave her, I sent her flowers for sure. And I think what, I'm sure I sent her something. I'm not, uh, not what, something, maybe a Swiss Army watch or something. I'm not, a, but I know I sent her something. I know that specifically. Were you embarrassed or shamed at all about the breakup of your relationship again? Shamed and yeah. embarrassed? No, no, you know what it was? It was a relief because I felt I was uh, working too hard. At the relationship? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, so you felt no sense of uh, public embarrassment? N not at all. Humiliation? No. Shame? No, that's why I think I, I was happy I was happy to move on. And were you? And I was proud of the fact that we seemed to be getting along, but despite it, you know, anyone who saw us together in those next two, three, two weeks at least, almost three weeks, saw two people who really got along, and even though they had split, really got along. Did you tell any of your close friends that you were going to break up with Nicole at or around the time that you did? No, but all of my close friends knew I had. They did. Yeah. After the fact, you mean? Yeah. You mean you told them that you had broken up with Nicole? Yeah, I told them it was, uh, yeah, because they saw Paula. Did you tell them that you had left her or she had left you? That we, sw we split up, you know. Did you tell them the circumstances? No, it was none of their business. Did you tell them the reasons? I think some of my close friends knew <coughs> already because Who I, just, be? I just, I just, Alan Austin would have known because I'm sure I talked about it with Alan Austin. Uh, Anyone else? I don't know. I, it's not something you, you know, my close friends are, it's not something you talk about. You play golf, but in, on a golf course, you know, everybody talks about whatever they talk about. Did you but, tell them Cowling's this too? You know, I, you know, you got to understand, I didn't see a lot of AC, but possibly. Kathy Randa for sure. Arnell for sure. Uh, um, but um, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was somewhat abrupt. Okay, you don't owe him an explanation. Okay. Just answer his questions. <coughs> the breakup was abrupt, that's what you're saying. Somewhat, somewhat, yeah. By the time of Nicole's death, did all of your close friends and family know that you had split up with her? Yes. You had already told your mother and your sisters? I don't know if I specifically called them to say it. I don't know if I ever thought of that, but anybody around me knew, yes.
Did you know uh, whether Nicole ever did see a therapist? Uh, I don't believe so. She told you she wouldn't, right? She didn't want to. She, she thought it was a waste of time. Okay. <coughs> Do you know if she saw a therapist named Jennifer uh, Amelie? No. Amelie? No. You ever hear of her? Uh, A-M-E-L-I. Last night. How'd you hear about her last night? I think Geraldo. <laughs> Somebody told me some girl was on Geraldo saying something. No. Um, is that the first time you've heard that name? Yeah. You um, ever go to uh, Jennifer Amelie's office one, on any occasion? Uh, not to see uh, Jennifer Amelie, no. I wouldn't know where her office is. Did you ever uh, confront Nicole uh, in late May or early June before her death and in front of her therapist's office? I didn't know she had a therapist. In front of an office building? No. Did you ever confront her and uh, another gentleman with her in her Ferrari in late May, early June? No, I never saw her with another gentleman in her Ferrari then. Or any other vehicle? No, never. Did you ever stop to um, <coughs> talk to Nicole in late May, early June before her death while she was in her car? No. Did you ever call her over while she was in the car? No. Did you ever confront her in a parking lot anywhere? No. <coughs> Do you think this Jennifer Amelie is a fraud? Don't answer that. Do you have any knowledge of that? Don't I answer don't know. Don't answer that. Okay. Was Nicole afraid of you? I don't believe so, no. Did Nicole ever tell you that she was afraid of you? No. Did Nicole ever tell you that she uh, had fear of you? What's the difference? Don't answer that. You answered the question already. You know, it's not appropriate to instruct him just because I asked him a second question that may be similar or the same as the first question. You know, I've never read Petricelli on evidence or deposition objection. Probably never will either, Mr. Baker. <laughs> I bet it's the shortest book I could ever read. Too. It's only shorter than yours. You sound like Marsha Clark. No. <laughs> now, I, I'm not going to say anything about that. I don't want my comments to be misconstrued either way. <coughs> anyway, um, she, she ever tell you that she uh, was afraid of you? No. Did you ever discuss that subject with her? No. Did she... Uh, did you ever sense that she was afraid of you? No. Did you ever sense that she felt terror uh, as a result of no. your conduct? No. Not even in the 911 call on October 25 when you heard her voice? I didn't hear her voice. I didn't know she was on the phone with you. You heard it in court, though, right? Yeah. And did you sense terror in, in her voice? If I was on the other end of that line, it would have sounded that way to me, yes. Did that surprise you when you heard that? In light of the fact that she left the room and came down with me to, to be in the room with me, yes, because I knew she wasn't afraid. Why do you suppose she, uh, she expressed terror in her voice if she wasn't afraid? You want me to speculate? I want you to tell me what you think, yes. Well, I think his state of mind is irrelevant relative to that issue. I don't think so. We'll let the trial judge decide. Hmm? We answer. will when you make the motion. Don't answer it. <coughs> That was my question. Yeah, I'd like to know um, if you have any understanding as to why she expressed terror in that phone call. If Don't you, answer it. If you believe she didn't have any. His opinions and well, he might have speculation. He may, he may have a current understanding. It's not based on speculation. It's based on some information. No, he's not going to answer that question. You're not going to argue the case through, do, through your argumentative question. Do, do you think that she was trying to... Um, trick the person that she called? Don't, don't answer that. Do you know if Nicole kept any diary in uh, May or June of 94? Not that I know of. <coughs> Antibiotics are not kicking in here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know. 
Let the record reflect that for about the fourth time, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Petrocelli are whispering to each other. I think it's the first time, Mr. Baker. The right? first time after lunch, I would agree with that. In the words of Phil Baker, you don't have to give him an explanation. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, you've never provided us with those documents, have you? And I believe those are the subject of special interrogatories, were they not? Uh, I don't think so. But I will check. You never provided us with anything. No responses. N nor have you. <laughs> I've provided you with a lot of objections, only the same as you've provided me with. with. Only objections. That's all you've ever provided me with. But a lot of them, I admit that. Okay. Did you want to say something to me, John? I, I dare not, especially the mic here. Or Mr. Baker will be all over me. Not at all. Are these her supposed letters or her supposed diaries? Oh, we'll find out what they are. Well, if we're being denied access to these diaries because of failure to respond to discovery, I don't think it's proper. These are documents that you have. You got them from the same place that I have them, okay? Where is that? The murder book. And what are they? There are documents in the murder book, that's so you all. You won't describe them when you tell me I have them. I'm not going to debate this now. We're going to try to ask some, some questions. I, you still haven't responded to my numerous requests to have Mr. Simpson produce documents here. No, I haven't gotten responses from your side either, Mr. Um, Mr. Simpson, did you uh, speak to Nicole on June 3, 1994? Do you recall? Mm, I don't recall. Do you recall coming to pick up the kids at Bundy around 8.30 in the evening? Yes. And uh, the children wanted to stay with Nicole because she had let them organize sleepovers at the last minute. I don't know what the children wanted. Nicole just told me that she had just organized something for the kids. Did she tell you that she would drop them off first thing in the morning? Uh, she might have. If you don't recall, tell me you don't I don't recall. recall. I don't recall. Well, you went there to pick up the kids. Did you leave with the kids? No. <coughs> and then you went home, right? Yes. Did you get the kids the next day? At some point, yes. Okay. How'd you get them? I, I don't recall. Now, the evening before, had you had an argument with Nicole? No. Is that the night that um, she called you about um, going out with her friends, June 2? What do you mean going out with her friends? You remember before you told me about a conversation where she was upset with you because no, no, you were going out with Faye Resnick and no, Christian Reichardt? No, this is before that. Excuse me? This is before then. Uh, the Christian Reichardt, uh, Faye Resnick situation occurred later. Before, before this. Before I June 3. I believe so, yes. Okay. Now, did you hang up, uh, did she hang up on you on the evening of uh, June 2? I don't recall talking to her on June 2. Uh, any, anywhere uh, near, near June 2, she hang up on you? I don't, I don't believe I talked to her. I don't, I think I had cut off communications before then. Did you say to her um, when you came to see her on June 3 at 8.30 p.m. to pick up the kids, uh, you hung up on me last night? Did you say that to her? No. You're going to pay for this bitch. No. You're holding money from the IRS. No. You're going to jail, you fucking cunt. No. You think you can do any freaking thing or f something like that you want. No. You've got it coming. No. I've already talked to my lawyers about this bitch. Did you say any of those things to her? No. <clears throat> They'll get you for tax evasion, bitch. I'll see to it. No. You're not going to have a fucking dime left, bitch. No. Said none of those things? None of those things. Do you know um, whether Sydney has had a girlfriend with her at the house when you went over to pick up the children? I believe a family had just arrived. Okay. And do um, you remember the name of Sydney's friend? No. Do you know the names of any of her friends around this time? Yeah, or the normal friends, no. What about Allegra? Does that ring a bell? No. 
But I do know for the period of time I was there, they were all just outside walking in. When you were leaving? Yeah, when I drove up and when I left. They were outside the whole time? Yeah, they were walking in and she said, a friend's here. Did you meet the friend's parents? No. The next day, um, <coughs> do you know whether Nicole came over to return the, the children to you, but you were not home? Mm. Did you learn about that? Uh, I don't know. Return the children to him? I don't Bring know. the children to you. Mm, I don't know. Do, do you recall whether um, on the weekend before June 3, around May 28, 1994, you told Nicole that you could not take the kids that weekend? I possibly. I don't, if you don't, don't recall. Really, I don't know. Did you tell Nicole that even though you were in town over the weekend? I don't think I was in town that weekend. On May 22, um, did uh, Nicole tell you that she was officially splitting up with you? No, we had already split up. Did she tell you on May 22, which is a Sunday, that uh, you and she were going back to every other weekend? No, I don't recall that at all. Did she say that she needed rest and that you were gone too much? On 22, no. I think she was more into me. but. I was not amenable. <laughs> were you uh, were you gone the last four weekends prior to May 22? Out of town, that is. I don't. I may have been. I I, I hosted. Uh, no, I may. I'm not. I got to look at calendar, my calendar. Is that a calendar, Mr. Baker? Yeah, it's a calendar. I, well, I could you have been check because. It out uh, cause, uh, I'd no. like to. See, it says May 1994. You can put up That's any date you want on there. Pretty you know. good. Does it say that? Hey, my my respect for you is growing by the minute. There, I'm uh, impressed. On that, right? <laughs> I'm typing them in. He types them. In. It, it would, it, the question is, it would says, be. Don't answer that. It would be difficult because two of those four weekends. It would be difficult to be away those previous four weekends because two of those four weekends I spent with Nicole and the kids. One of those four weekends, weekend two weekends before that, I spent with Lou Brown, Nicole and the kids, uh, and the weekend before that was the weekend I returned from Puerto Rico and I spent with Nicole and the okay. kids. So, so it couldn't have been. That's, that's impossible. Well, let me um, hand you out a document and ask you if you know anything about what, it. What am I supposed to? Let me mark this at Exhibit 86. Okay. So, so the answer There's is no. No, no, I wasn't out of town the four previous weekends unless you count being in Laguna with Nicole and the kids out of town one of those weekends. Okay. Can you mark that as an next exhibit in order? What you doing? What is this? Eighty-six. Is this is May. That's May of '94. I was home this Sunday. I went down this Sunday. Mr. Uh, yeah, okay, Mr. Simpson, you recognize uh, this handwriting on Exhibit 86? <sighs> not really, but not really. Does it appear to be Nicole's handwriting? I don't really recognize it to be, but it could be. Could you turn the pages? Mm -hmm. To a page. Just flip the pages and see if... Um, you believe this is in Nicole's handwriting? It looks a lot like her handwriting, yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> now, do you know uh, whether she was um, keeping notes of events in her life no. during this period of time? No. May of 94? No. Do you know why she would write down uh, the things that I just read to you on a piece of paper? Inaccurately? No. Yeah why she would write them down if uh, they were false? 
Well, obviously, when you mention those four weekends out of town, that's false. So I have no idea. But all the other things that I read to you were false also, right? Yes. All of the, uh, the vile things that she attributed to you. Yes. And do you have any, uh, any understanding as to why Nicole Brown, in her about June 3 of 1994, would be writing down such things about you that were untrue? I have no idea. Did you ever know, know her to do something like that in the past? I knew she would say things uh, because, as I mentioned, Judy and I had that conversation before I left Puerto Rico that were not true. I wasn't aware of any of her writings at that time. What do you mean, Judy and I had had that conversation before I left Puerto Rico that were not true? I didn't follow your last answer. Uh, as I said to you earlier, Judy made a comment in uh, one week when I was in Puerto Rico that she had spoke to Nicole one day and OJ, the next day she spoke to her, Nicole attributed things to Judy that Judy had not said in the previous conversation the day before. I see. <coughs> Did you know Nicole to have a very vivid imagination? And she was great with the kids, so yeah, she was good. She was good at making up uh, games and, you know, writing stories with the kids. So, yeah, she was pretty good at that. Had she ever, um, to your knowledge, made up things about you in the past? Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, earlier in your deposition that she did so in connection with the uh, a divorce proceeding to get you to tear up the prenuptial, right? That's correct. Uh, though you also said you didn't see anything that she wrote. She just no. told you that they had told her to say things, right? Yes. But other than that incident, uh, did you know her to make up things about you that were not true? I, in what context? I, I don't. In we, any context. We, when, in any context. Yeah. Yes. Yes. When? Often, when you have an argument, and the next time you talk, she'd say, "You said this," and I said, "That's not what I said." <laughs> you said this. I mean, you know, like most relationships, I would imagine. But you would do the same thing, right? She would say the same thing to me that I would say to her. Right. So in other uh, words, you didn't view that as, as unusual or abnormal, did you? No. Okay. But in terms of what I just showed you, you, you would view that as highly unusual, right? Um, you don't have to characterize it any way you want. Uh, yeah. Char do you think that this ordinary behavior for Nicole as you know her for 17 years to write things like this about you of this nature that are completely false? Her all her actions were unusual and, un and not like the Nicole I knew in the last few years of her life. Many of them were, and that's why I had a concern, and I expressed those concerns to both Ju Judy Brown and Lou Brown. Well, the only thing you've said so far that you expressed to Judy uh, and Lou Brown were drinking. Yes. What, did you express anything else to them about her highly unusual behavior over the last couple of years of her life? Yes, the choice of people that she ran around with, some of the things that transpired uh, during the, uh, that period of time, yes, I, I expressed my concerns about those things. Did you think Nicole was mentally ill in May of 1994? No, I, I'll use her words. She seemed to be lost. Okay. <coughs> but at no time you, uh, did you attempt to uh, get the children taken away from her, No, right? she's a great mother great mother so at you, all times. So you, and you thought at all times that she was emotionally and mentally fit to care for the children? Right? Very much so. Up to the last day of her life? Right? Yes. It is true you were having a dispute with her about the IRS at this time, right? No. That's not true either? No, I just wanted her to change addresses. Have you ever seen this document before? Uh, I believe I may have. When? In, when I was in jail. And how did you first come across it? I don't know. I think they just brought all kind of discovery in, and I don't <coughs> recall specifically seeing this, but it doesn't seem unusual to me to see this at this point. And when you, uh, after you first saw it, <coughs> did you talk to anybody other than lawyers about it? Mm, you don't have to answer that. Why not? I asked some other than lawyers. Oh, I apologize. We asked the tough questions when you talked to Mr. Winter. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I know I didn't talk to anybody. If, if I talked to my lawyers about these things specifically, they'd have been the only people I talked about. For but. example, Cora Fishman, have you ever spoken to her about why Nicole was writing stuff like this no. last month of her life? No. Or Christian? No. Are you curious to know? No, don't answer that. On the weekend of May 28th, you can look at Mr. Baker's electronic calendar. Mm -hmm. Nicole writes in here that you said you couldn't take the kids that weekend, but they did spend the night Friday and Monday with you. Is that true? No. Another inaccuracy in these letters. Another non-truth, I should say, in these letters. Okay, it is not true that the kids spent the night Friday and then again Monday on Memorial Day? That's correct. And you were uh, in Palm Springs? That's correct. Were the children with you? No. Not at all on that trip? No. On Saturday and Sunday, uh, Nicole says that they were, the children were with her. Was well, that it true? it says in the document, Exhibit 86. Yeah, that's that what I mean, Mr. Baker. Okay. Is that true? You can't get your foundation from your own questions, Mr. Petrichelli. Pardon me? <laughs> can, I, I can try. I, I've been overruled. You can. <coughs> uh, were the children with Nicole on Saturday and Sunday? I was out of town. I had no idea where they were. Do you know uh, from when you saw them again if they saw the Flintstones and went to play miniature golf? No. Do you know whether you had the children the uh, weekend before Memorial Day weekend? Uh, certainly, uh, certainly for Sunday, I certainly had them. Uh, when, when we, yeah, certainly Sunday. I, just, I don't recall if they, certainly Sunday, I know. Uh, I don't think I was in town Friday or Saturday. Okay. Uh, can you turn the page? Which page? I assume we're going to the... Which page? To June 4th. Yes. Uh, last page, Mr. Simpson, okay. June 4th. This is Exhibit 86. Did, they, did the uh, children get to your house around uh, 1 p.m. on June 4? What is that, Mr. Baker? Saturday? It is. Saturday. That, they could have, yes. Did they spend uh, the evening with you on June 4? They could have, I'm not sure. Why are you not sure? Because I'm not sure. I, I knew they were with me on Sunday the 5th. And some parts of me feel that Nicole brought them over Sunday the 5th. Uh, matter of fact, I'm almost 100% sure she did because Justin had dirtied up his clothes and Paula took him to uh, Retnicks or someplace to get him new clothes to go to an affair with us. When did you go to that affair? That Sunday, the fifth. And uh, that was a pediatric AIDS event. Yes. And then you and the kids, and Cato, and his daughter went out to dinner at Sizzler. Yes. Was that Sunday so. evening? Yes. Okay, could you turn back now to um, two pages earlier? Okay. 
Do you, do you, you see the entry where it says Friday, April 30? Mr. Baker, is that a, uh, mm -hmm. April yeah. 30, 1994, is that a Friday? Saturday, according Saturday. to this. Yeah. Do you know if you uh, had the weekends uh, for the, do you know where you picked up the kids for the weekend from school last weekend in April? I, I don't think so. I think Nicole and I, I Nicole and I were, I think I'm April what? Show me, is this April? Yeah, that's she, April 94, the 30th is a Saturday, not a might, Friday. She might be referring to 93 here. <laughs> that that was very about? good. What, 93? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to... Uh, I don't know, 93, I, I, I don't know what I was doing in April Well, did you take the kids to Vegas on a trip in 1993? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, but I think that was in April 30th. But April 2? Yes. That was 1993, correct? That was 1993. Okay. And uh, was Paul on that trip with you? Uh, Paula met us there. Okay. You, you went with the two kids and Paula met you there, right? Two kids and Arnell and Paula met us there. Okay. Turn to page uh, 1879, which is two pages before. Okay. Uh, in the first part of this document, there's an entry about uh, you picked up the kids uh, for Justin's first Wednesday visitation. Do you know what that refers to? Uh, at the top of the thing? Yeah. I think once I got back, yes, I do know what that is. What does it refer to? to? I think once I got back from Buffalo, I mean from New York that year. What year? This would have been, this would have been 93. Okay. Uh, I, we made out a, an arrangement that every other weekend I would get the kids and I, and I had a, the option on Wednesdays to take them from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock or something like that. And again, this is before you attempted your reconciliation, right? Uh, yes. And it says below uh, the first entry, he will take the kids Friday noon to P period S period. What does that mean, do you know? I'm sure it's Palm Springs. Okay. And did you used to have Kathy Rand to pick up the kids? I think she may have once or twice. Okay, did that bother Nicole? I don't know. She never said anything to me. And AC, did he used to pick up the children too? Not from school. Not normally from school. From Nicole's house? <sighs> During this period of time, I was avoiding Nicole. I don't, I don't think so. I think I know he bought, bought them two Palm Springs, as this said, for me, uh, because I was already there. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't really recall AC picking, not for me anyway, picking the kids up from school. I'm sure he did for her once or twice. You recall canceling a pickup of the children on March 10? Um, mentioned in the last entry. I don't recall, but if I was out of town, I would have had to cancel, yes. Is this, this is March 10, what, what day? 1993. Yeah, if I wasn't in town, I probably did. Now, uh, go back down to the bottom of the next page, 1880. <laughs> the entry at the end says, um, the rest of 1993 were spent either with me or as family weekends, hours, or days. OJ and I got back together starting April 12, 1993. Was that correct that you got back together? No, that's what she wanted. But as I told you, that's when she had a little problem that I wouldn't commit. Uh, was, did you go to Cabo in April? We had got back from Cabo, and she assumed that got us back together, and I told her it didn't. Okay. Earlier today, I was asking you about um, 
the injuries that uh, Nicole sustained and for which he received medical treatment. And you told me about Cowling's taking her to St. John's on April 1, 1989. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know of any other instances when Nicole... Say April 1? Um, January 1, excuse me, 1989. Do you know of any other instances when Nicole was treated for injuries? Well, one other incident that, once again, I insisted she go in case there was an injury, but there wasn't, so there was nothing to treat. Was that when she uh, fell off a bicycle? That's what she told me, yes. Okay. And those are the only two times that you know when Nicole was treated for injuries? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know whether she ever suffered any injuries while she was pregnant? No. I, I don't know of any injuries she ever okay. uh, suffered while she was pregnant. Did you have an argument with her about uh, her first pregnancy with Sid Sydney as to whether or not she should have the baby? No, I only got married to have kids. And you had no such argument with respect to her second pre pregnancy with Justin? None at all. When, when she was pregnant with Sydney, um, was she supposed to have twins? I think she told me that she lost one of the, that, uh, that she could have had twins, but one of the sacks didn't go or something early on. Early on in the pregnancy? Yes. Did the, to your knowledge, the, the fetus had not Yeah, I think, I think from term. the time she officially knew she was pregnant, that had already happened, from what she said. What had already happened? That it could have been, but one of them didn't hold or something. What, was a second uh, twin born stillborn, do you know? No, I'm saying even before she knew officially she was pregnant, whatever happened had happened. Already? Yeah. So she, she only carried one fetus? Yes. Yes. Were you in the delivery room with her for Sydney? I believe so, yes. And for Justin? Yes. Did you have a, an argument with Nicole about whether you should be in the delivery room for Justin? Yes. Relate that. She said I made her too nervous <laughs> when she was in the delivery room with Sydney, that I was too nervous or something, and, but I still did it. My first wife told me the same thing. When she was, um, he didn't ask you what your first wife okay. told you. Jeez. When she, when she, why here? Look at the color of it, Jake. It's because of you. When she was um, pregnant with uh, Sydney, did you tell her that you believed she had gained too much weight? No. And you never berated her physical appearance. No. Same with Justin. Same. Yes. Have you ever heard that Nicole complained about you calling her fat during her pregnancies? Mm, after all of this had happened, I heard it, yes. And how'd you hear that? I think I read it somewhere. In her own handwriting? No, it may have been in a magazine or a news, some of the coverage of the trial. <coughs> but it wasn't true, right? That's correct. Dan, I heard on the news that both of these guys are going to examine today, so you've got to hurry up. You did? Uh, yeah. That's a bombshell. That's a bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> you have the best lines of, the, of these. He, he, he saved them, but they're good. Um, how many times did Nicole hit you in your relationship? I'd be guessing. He doesn't want you to guess. No, so give me your best estimate. If you have a best estimate. Mm, five or six. <coughs> Was one of these the 89 incident? Yes. Okay. You've already talked about that. Mm -hmm. What were the other incidents? I, 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 Two or three of them were after 89. Uh, I believe I documented those. Uh, and I think at some point early in our relationship, when well, I say early before we got married. What do you mean you documented those? Uh, 
I would call Kathy whenever something happened and tell her to write it down and put it in a file because it, that was recommended to me by some police officer. When the, uh, who was the police officer? I don't recall, but it, it was around, somehow around the 89 thing. Where are those uh, documents? I don't know. Have you ever seen them? I haven't seen them. I hadn't seen them since all this happened, but I, I'm pretty sure they were around in discovery or something. <coughs> you saw them during the criminal trial? I, I'm not 100% sure I did, but I'm pretty sure that, that they were found around that time. You haven't seen them recently? Them. No. And um, can you describe the incidents that you wrote down? <sighs> One time, uh, she just started hitting and kicking me and I went into Justin's room. Um, why, I, I don't recall what the conversation was at this time, uh, but I know she did until she got tired because I just covered my groin and covered my, turned my back to her. Uh, and then another time she came in, I was just laying on the bed and she took a stack of books and just slammed them down on me. And the other time may not have been physical, the other time may have been more verbal. Where was the other time? I, I don't know, but it should be written in that thing. I don't recall right now. And why did she slam the books down on you? It was, it was, I, I don't recall what it was. I, 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 I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what it was. Was she upset at you? Yeah. About what? what she, that's what I'm saying. That's a great sure. question. Uh -huh. No, she always threw books at him. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, you know, it wouldn't surprise me based on what I'm hearing. I, I, don't, I don't recall what it was about. You have no recollection at all? No. Uh, did it hurt? Not really. Okay. Uh, did you, you didn't call the police or anything, right? No. You made no report other than to Randa, right? Yes, right. Did you tell Nicole you were keeping track of this, by the way? No. Was that the year 1989? I don't know. It may have been. And what about the other incident where she hit you and kicked you? What about it? When did that occur? After 89. After the 80, New Year's Day 89 incident. In, in the year 1989? I don't know. I don't recall. What was, uh, what was the cause of that problem? I have no idea. You just don't remember? I just don't remember. At the time, do you remember having yeah, I was time, I was time At the time, I remember it, my purpose was the document and uh, and I did well I mean, she didn't just come up in clear blue and start hitting and kicking you right you, there was no, an argument we were, you were having we, we that said escalated something. Into she said something I said something yeah, okay. Ted, you answer she said something I said something and she started ah and uh, I just turned and walked into Justin's room and she followed me and this was the first time there'd been any physical confrontation after the January uh, incident in I believe so, yes. Now, by this time, you had signed that document that says if you were to inflict injury on her physically, then uh, she could tear up the prenup. Exactly. Is that one of the reasons you restrained yourself? Well, I believe that was one of the reasons she was hitting me. <laughs> oh, to uh, bait you into hitting her? Well. Is I don't that, know what she what was doing. Think? I don't know what she was doing. But she knew that I would not do anything. So why'd she, she know did. that? Because I'd sent the, the letter. Because I'd signed the letter. And um, is that also the reason why you didn't hit her uh, when she slapped, the, slammed the books down? Do I wouldn't have hit her under any circumstances before this, if she slammed the books down on me. Is that why you restrained yourself from removing her from the room? She, when she did it, she Is left the room. Is that the only reason that you restrained yourself from taking her out no, of the room? No, no. The, the piece of paper that you signed. Is it a reason? No, that isn't what you asked him. That's my next question. No. Was it a reason? Why? Were you, was it a reason? As I told you before, I wouldn't have hit her before. I wouldn't have hit her before this. What I'm trying to find out is whether after you signed this agreement with her, you were uh, deterred by that agreement from hitting her. I wouldn't have done it anyway. Okay. Now you said she verbally abused you? Yeah. How did she do that? I don't know. I'd have to look at the thing. That's the reason I wrote them down to remind me and I don't recall right now. Is that the only occasion on which she verbally abused you? Well, it's, I don't know. The verbal abuse had a totally different uh, 
uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what verbal abuse is at this point. It's a little different to me than it was uh, back then. It's a little different to you now, now than it was to me back then. In what sense? And uh, I hear people talk to each other. Virtually every friend I know, I've heard them get into arguments and say things. I've heard Judy say things to Lou that today I would, from what I understand, it is now verbal abuse. But at the time, I didn't think it was at all. I thought it was just people talking. Did you ever uh, hit your first wife, Marguerite? Never. Do you, did you consider yourself a, uh, a batterer? Don't, don't answer that. Did you consider Nicole a battered spouse? Don't answer that. What are, what are the basis? No sound bites is the basis. This isn't about sound bites, Mr. Baker. Yes, it's not, it is. it's not fair. I'm, I'm not going to let him answer it, so you can do anything you want. What I'm, I'm not going to let him answer it. Well, you can make any trying, speeches or whatever you want. I'm not trying to make speeches. I'm trying to explain to you that uh, his history of, of abuse, uh, his relationship with Nicole is highly relevant to the issues in this case. And uh, it's on that basis that I'm trying to explore. You wrote the word uh, battered, or you said you were a battered spouse in the so-called suicide note, right? Uh, I said sometimes I felt like a battered spouse, yeah. yes. Well, wh what did it feel like when you felt that way? Uh, I felt that when you, uh, for instance, uh, when she was hitting me, there was, I had nothing to do. Like, and I didn't feel that I, in my conscience, that I could call the police. Uh, so I felt helpless. Why couldn't you call the police? Because I just wouldn't do that. Just your choice, yeah. right? It's my choice. I don't. I didn't think it was a police matter. Okay. And do you believe that Nicole was a battered spouse? From what I know of of it, I would say in '89 that day, yes. Is that the only day that you believe that she was a battered spouse in the course of your entire relationship with her? In my understanding of it today, I would say we were both verbally at times abusive of one another but if that's the case I, would, I in my opinion most of the people I know are verbal abusers at the time before your current your current understanding is is gained as after her murder is that right no well at the time uh, that you were married to her before you were divorced in 1992 did you think that she was a battered spouse in the no. course of her relationship no but she thought you were a battered spouse. At that time, no. I'm sorry, did you say, did she think that you thought you were a battered spouse? We're talking no. before 89, right? I, I thought you said that she No. Thought. The question was, at the time that you were married to her, before your divorce in 1992, did 92. you think she was a battered spouse? Mm -hmm. I thought on New Year's that that was a, I understood from what I read and saw about battery at the time that that certainly was an abusive incident. Uh, before then, I would have said no. When you said you were um, a battered spouse, what incidents did you have in mind? The slapping and the hitting and the verbal abuse? He's already answered that, number one, and he didn't say he was. He said he felt like it. What's the difference? Well, the difference may be a legal conclusion that you're getting to that I'm not going to let him answer, and he's not going to answer that question either. You you, you've asked and answered that about four times now. You ever been diagnosed by anyone as a batterer? No. Do you know whether Nicole was ever diagnosed as a battered spouse? No. I don't know who would, what you're talking about, diagnosed. Did, did uh, you were never diagnosed as a battered spouse, right? No. D did uh, Lenore Walker examine you? Uh, yes. And did she conclude you were a battered spouse? I don't know if that was her purpose. I don't know what her conclusions were, to be honest with you. Did she ever tell you that? What? That you were a batterer? Mm, I don't, you know, I would have to really... Excuse I me, I, I misspoke. My question to you is, did Lenore Walker ever tell you that she was a batterer, that you were a batterer? I don't, this is my doctor. Can I talk about this? You thing? don't have to. It's a, okay. He was a designated expert at trial. But she didn't testify, as I recall. I don't think that makes a difference. Well, then you're going to have to test it in the court, because I'm not going to let him answer it. Do you know who Lenore Walker is? Yes. Uh, you ever meet with her? Yes. Was there anyone else present? At times, yes. Who? Uh, this other doctor. I can't think of her name. How many times did you meet with Lenore? Well, I don't recall. I was in jail, so whenever she came. 
more than twice? Yes. <laughs> Are you aware that she has said on national television that you've admitted to conduct that is battery? No. And you aware that she has called you a batterer? Don't don't no. answer that. You would disagree with that? Don't don't answer that question. What tests did she administer to you? Don't answer that. Those are all protect, those are protected by the uh, physician-patient privilege. So these were disclosed reports, uh, including the MMPI. Okay. You want to take a little break here? Sure, why not? Okay, Mr. Leonard. Whispering in your ear. He's my co-counsel for the 12th time. <laughs> That's why I got out of music, Mr. Baker. Is the trumpet that I read? When you're trumpet and piano, and I tell you, I was the only one in there by the end of the night. <laughs> we back on Except the my wife. <laughs> we back That's loyalty. We were talking about Dr. Lenore Walker before the break. Yes. Um, how many times did you meet with her? I don't know. A number of times, though? Yes. Now, did you tell Dr. Lenore Walker that you had... Um, Beat your wife? No, you don't have to answer that. I think that's protected by the physician patient privilege. Did, did you tell Dr. Lenore Walker uh, about uh, acts of spousal abuse? Same objection, same instruction. <laughs> You're not going to let him answer any of the conversations with Dr. Walker? Correct. Uh, on the ground of this privilege? Yes. What was your purpose in uh, meeting with, with Dr. Walker? If he had a purpose. Yeah, if you had one. Uh, I personally didn't have a purpose. And more than a dozen meetings, would you say? I don't know. And was this other doctor present at all of them? No. Was there anyone else present besides either Dr. Walker and this other person? No, no. Was she also a doctor? Yes. And how do you know that? Because uh, I, I believe when they introduced themselves, it was doctor and doctor. What was the subject matter of your conversations with them? You don't have to answer that either, because that's subject to the physician-patient privilege. And don't answer that. <coughs> Did you take an MMPI test? I don't know what that is. A test where you, a psychological test where you answered a lot of questions, multiple choice, four or five hundred. I don't know if that's what it was, but I took a lot of tests. Written tests? I believe so. Who were present when you took those tests? Mm, they were. Either one or the other or both. Okay. Were you told the results of those tests? No. Do you know why you were taking those tests? It had something to do with the case. I knew that. Do you know what it had to do with the case? Mm -mm. No. 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 Dr. Walker ever tell you that you were a batterer? You don't have to answer that. Well, I'm not going to ask any more questions about that, Mr. Baker, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll argue we'll, about that at we'll a subsequent time. We'll resolve that at another time. Fair enough. <clears throat> While you were married to Nicole, you had a relationship with a woman named Tawny Kittane? Yes. Uh, well, that was in the late 80s, is that right? Yes. Okay. And at, that relationship end before the New Year's Eve incident? Years before, yes. Yeah. And did it ever resume again? No. Why did you call her from the airplane coming back from uh, Chicago on June 13? If I did, I was looking for Kathy. And uh, what does Kathy have to do with Tawny Katane? They're best friends. They were at the time best friends. Did they live near each other? Mm, Kathy lived in the valley and and Tani lived at the time on okay. this side of the hill. And was that the only reason you remember calling uh, Tani uh, from the plane? Yes. Okay. Um, you said that uh, from what you know now, you would c consider yourself to be a battered spouse but what you knew at the time, you did not so regard yourself as a battered spouse. Is that, that right? That isn't what he said. Well, you wrote uh, the, 
down as of June 17, 1994, that you were a battered spouse. He felt, correct? He said he felt like he had. Sometimes I felt. Well, he said you felt like you were a battered spouse as of June 17th, right? Sometimes I felt like a battered spouse. When, when was the first time that you came to a realization that you felt like a battered spouse? When Nicole was hitting me that time in the hall. I don't know if that's the first if that was the first incident in that group of incidences, but I, I felt helpless. And when she threw the books on you, did you feel like a battered spouse then? I felt helpless, yes. Do, do you think Nicole felt helpless as a result of your incident with her? Don't, don't answer that. Oh, it calls you? for pure speculation. Okay. And his state of mind relative to her state of mind is... Uh, is irrelevant, and I'm going to instruct him not to answer the question. Did, did you, well, this is a discovery deposition, but anyway, I'll, I'll ask another question. Did you uh, observe her being helpless? When? When you were struggling with her, oh. wrestling with her, as you put it, January 1, 1989. Well, she was wrestling back, so she wasn't helpless. She was not helpless in the sense she, she was, was struggling felt. back. In my case, I wasn't struggling back. In her case, she was. Has Nicole ever verbally abused you in public? Yes. I mean, I don't. At the time, I didn't think it was abuse, but yes. <coughs> in in your. Uh, in your video, Mr. Simpson, in response to that searing examination by Ross Becker, uh, you said... At least he could complete his in a day. <laughs> 90 minutes. 90 minutes, Mr. Baker. <laughs> you said in response to a question about whether you were a battered husband, that is a problem that uh, when I am free to speak and I go and I plan to speak to women's groups, I think that is an issue. That is an issue that, you know, battery is just not a one-way street. I think it is more an attitude than anything. Just because it doesn't hurt when someone hits you, someone slaps you, or someone in front of people is verbally abusive to you, to me, all that co constitutes battery. From what I understand it to be now, yes. Hey, now, did you have that understanding during your relationship with uh, Nicole? No. All of this understanding was obtained after she died? No, after 89. And a little after she died, a little in, in talking to Lenore. Did you become aware of battery as a social problem after this incident in January of 1989? I don't understand that question. Well, did you become aware of it more than you had been in the past? Did you learn about it? Did you read about it? Did you go to sessions? Yes. Which, which one do you want to answer? All of those. Did you those do all do, those things? Don't, don't answer the question. It's compound. Did, did you read books on uh, spousal abuse or battery after the 89 incident? I believe so, yes. And you attended uh, therapy sessions? Yes. And, and you spoke to professionals about it? Yes. Okay. And from that point on, do you think you had a good understanding of what battery was? <sighs> to an extent, yes. And from that point on, did you ever batter Nicole? No. Did Nicole ever slap you in front of people? Yes. When did she do that? Once in the late 70s, early 80s, and then once in a club. The first time, uh, <coughs> who was present? Oh, I, I really didn't know the people. I was at a party. She slapped you in front of strangers? Yes. Basically, yes. Uh, what did you do? I, I left. Left her there? Yes. Where was this place? I don't know if it was called Bumbles or Pips at the time. Pips? Pips or Bumbles. It was it a restaurant? Time. No, it was a restaurant club. Uh, can you name anybody who was present that witnessed the at, slapping? At this point in time, no. Any of your friends there? They may have been, but I, I just don't recall. Who might have been there? Mm. This calls for Jeez. pure speculation. I mean, it would. I, I really don't know who might have been there. Billy Keel, Susie Keel. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anybody else come to mind? No. And the second occasion when Nicole slapped you in public? Uh, it's in Laguna. And who was present? 
At the, at the incident, uh, most of her sisters, for sure. And I don't know who else. Was this in a restaurant? No, it was, uh, it may have been a restaurant. It may have been at uh, a Mexican, I can't think of the name, Las Prisas or something. Oh. Prisas. Any friends there? I, you know, there were a lot of people there and I just, I just can't recall. This was 12, 15 years ago. Why'd she slap you? I don't know. Did you have a fight with her? Maybe an argument. Yeah. Maybe some words. And she slapped you earlier because you had an, in the uh, club because of an argument also? Uh, I don't know if it was an argument. I may have been flirting with somebody. Okay. Uh, did you hit her back on either of those occasions? No, I left on both of those occasions. Did you make up with her soon thereafter? Yes. <coughs> did you ever tell Nicole that she was a batterer? No. Do you know whether Nicole ever sought treatment as a batterer? No. Did you ever discuss that she should seek such treatment? I don't think either one of us ever did. Now, Nicole didn't press charges against you, right? Correct. In the 89 incident, right? Correct. And she didn't go to the press either, right? Correct. And she did that uh, because of uh, your desire that she not disclose this to the press, right? I think part of it, yes. And she let it die out, right? Well, she called the police, so, yeah, I guess it, I guess we went on with our lives. Uh, is, did Michelle let you into her bedroom that night with a key? No. Did Michelle let Nicole into your room? No. Did, was Michelle involved at all? Yes. In what way? She was there. Did she see you two fighting? She heard us arguing. She didn't see us fighting, no. Did she come upstairs to um, see no. you at all? No. Okay. And, um... Callings wasn't there during the fight either, was he? No. <laughs> As of Nicole's death, um, did you have a contract with NBC as a sportscaster? Mm-hmm. You have to answer yes. Yes. Okay. When was that due to expire? I think I just had signed a an extension for another three or four years. Are you going to be asking about his financial no, affairs? No, not, not right now. Um, and were you under contract with uh, anybody else as of June 12, 94? Hertz, for sure. Was that a long-term contract? I think it was maybe two, three more years left on that. Did you have any other employment at that time? Other than my just normal stuff, you know, I was, you know, I'll do a movie here or there. Uh, I, I can't think of anything real specific, no. So the only two contracts you had were NBC and Hertz? Mm, I believe so. Okay. okay. <coughs> were you under contract to act in any movies to be produced? At the time of her death? Yes. Uh, no. And were any deals in development or anything like that? Well, I had done a, a, a something that was up for consideration uh, for a TV series called Frogman. You had done the pilot for Frogman, right? Yes. And had no contract outside of the pilot? Well, if, if they went to a series, I believe there was an, I believe there was an arrangement in place. Okay. And did you have any uh, agreements uh, with any other motion picture producers? No. Okay. Both NBC and Hertz contracts uh, have been canceled? Yes. Now, did you, uh, were you under contract to NBC and Hertz as of June, in June of, excuse me, in January of 89? No. Which one? What do you mean? Either of them? I was on contract to Hertz. But not NBC? Not NBC. Uh, were, you on, were you with another uh, uh, broadcasting company? No. So, when did you begin working for NBC? 1989. What year? I mean, what month in 89? The fall. Okay. And what was the last contract you had before that for a broadcasting company? I believe I, I, don't, I don't know what year, but sometime in the late 80s, I did something for a 
ESPN. It could have been ESPN. Were you ever employed by ABC? Yes. When was that? In the mid and early 80s. And when did and that then end? In the early 70s. Okay. When did it end in the 80s? I believe it was 86, maybe. So between 1986 and the fall of 89, you didn't have a regular broadcasting job, is that right? I did something with ESPN, I believe. I did one season, I believe, with ESPN, where I did five or six games. Uh, college football? No, pro games. <coughs> For one season, you said, right? Yes. So that was the only broadcasting work in between the uh, ABC and NBC jobs? Correct. Uh, and your contract uh, in the fall of 1989 with NBC, uh, how long was that for? I'm sorry, say that again. Your contract with NBC that you entered into in the fall of 89, how long was that a contract for? Somewhere between three and five years, I believe. Okay, was it uh, renewed? Yes. How many times? I believe in 94 it was being renewed for the third time for the third time i believe so were there any morals clauses in the nbc contract i you know i never read the contract okay. or in the hertz contract i never read the contract but i believe that's there's there's something pretty standard in most of those contracts about their ability to terminate uh, in the event of um conduct that they find objectionable? I believe so. Were you under, were you endorsing any other uh, products or services in January of 1989 besides Hertz? I, I don't recall. Okay. Let me go back uh, to Exhibit 86 for a minute. Where's the original, David? Yeah, here it is. No wonder you couldn't find it. I forgot to ask you about the first page, Mr. Simpson. Um, why don't you take a look at that? I want to ask you just to go over the first page with me. Okay. In, uh, it is true, referring to the first entry there, that you had not called Nicole between uh, Christmas and January 16, 1993. Is that right? Say that again now. Referring to the first entry at the top of page 86, is it true that between December 25, 1992 and January 16, 1993, you had not uh, called Nicole? If you have a recollection. Well, call Nicole or call my kids? Call Nicole. No, I didn't call Nicole. Uh, <clears throat> did you uh, tell Nicole that you were coming back to Los Angeles during the week uh, of or following January 16, 1993? Mm, I don't believe so, no. Did you come back that week? I don't know. Now, on Monday, January 18, 1993, were you in Los Angeles? Uh, I could have been. Do you recall picking up Justin uh, at Gretna Grain and Sydney from Rachel Berman's and taking them to breakfast? I don't recall it. I don't recall it, no, but I could have. Okay. Monday, uh, February 1, 1993, do you recall picking up uh, Justin from Oliver's party? Uh, I, do re I don't know where I picked him up from, but I do recall February 1st clearly, vividly, as a matter of fact. Why is that? Because it was the first time I had spoken or saw Nicole since Christmas. Do you know, uh, Dita is who, Judy? Judy, yes. Did Judy come to see the, uh, you and the kids on that day? Uh, when I drove up to get the kids clothes, Dita was standing outside with Nicole of their house, and that's when I saw Nicole. Okay. Did you pick up Sydney from school that day? I believe so. And did you take uh, the kids to karate? Yes. Okay. And, and did you watch uh, karate? I believe so. I don't know if I did or didn't. I'm not sure. Did you go uh, to Toscana's with Nicole, Judy, and the kids, or did you go home after karate? Um, I didn't do anything with Nicole. I saw Nicole for three or four minutes, and that was the only time I saw Nicole. Then you went home? Yes. Did you have a confrontation with Nicole about the February 2, 1993 vacation plans? Confrontation? I don't know if it's the right word. but Argument? I don't think that was the right word either. Nicole Disc was mistaken on... Nicole hadn't paid any heed to a letter that she received. From whom? From my office. 
uh, stating that I would not be in town the remainder of that week, so I wanted to spend time with my kids for, for the first, second, I believe the third, because I was leaving town on the third. And she didn't uh, pay any attention to that upset? <sighs> she wanted me to keep the kids all week because I had been, this was the first time I was back in L.A. And she made some comment about she was going to Europe that week. Did you call to leave a message that uh, you were going to stay in Florida? No. See, I'm referring to the last entry on here. Where is this at? It's, it's right down here. It's a very poor on that. OJ topic. called once to leave a message. Um, something stay in Florida. I can't read it. It could be, because I was in Florida, I would say, a lot during that time. Okay. I was looking to move to Florida. Uh, <laughs> during the week of February 13 and 19, did Nicole take the kids to Aspen to go skiing? I'm sorry? During the week, I'm referring now to the second page, Mr. Simpson, the only entry on there. Yeah. During the week of February 13 to 19, Nicole take the kids to Aspen to go skiing. I believe so. Okay, thank you. Um, let me show you... Uh, You recall Nicole uh, going uh, with Sydney to see Disney on Ice in uh, January of 1988? No. You recall you you being invited and not wanting to go? No. Okay. Do you recall Nicole taking Sydney uh, to go to Disney on Ice at some other occasion? No. Did you ever go to see Disney on Ice? I don't believe so. Okay. Well, let me show you this letter dated, it appears to be uh, January 1988, can't read the day. Mark this as next exhibit. Keep that original one there. Okay. This will be exhibit 87. Have a little more copy over here. Okay. This is 87. You ever seen this document before? I might have. When did you first see it? I believe uh, when I was in jail. I'm sorry. Has this been changed? This date? I can't read the date. Do you recall um, an incident when you came back uh, from going out with A.C. Cowlings? And um, you were drunk in or around January of 1988 and had a confrontation with Nicole? No. Do you recall calling her a fat pig? No. Do you recall whether Nicole was two months pregnant in uh, 1988? Mm. She probably would have been. She was two months pregnant with Justin, who was born in August of 1988, yeah, she probably correct? probably would have been, yes. Okay. It's down here in the middle, it says, uh, he never let up. You're a fat pig. You're disgusting. You're a slob. I want you out of my fucking house. Did you say those things to Nicole? Never. And then I took Sidney to bed, tried to anyway, and he proceeded to cut me down with AC and the entry downstairs. Do you recall that? No. I tried to tape the conversation, but the recorder didn't work. He was saying all those things again so that I could hear every word as he was telling AC, my wife's a fat ass, a liar. I stopped fucking other girls, and now I jack off the fat ass. Did you say those things? Never. You recall locking her out of her room? No. You lived in Rockingham then, right? In 88, yes. Yeah. Did you tell her to get out of your fucking house? No. You see all these things written down here? You want me to read it all? Well, look Next at the uh, look at the second page, Mr. Simpson. I'm at the no. first complete paragraph. It says that you you said uh, you want her to have an abortion with the baby. 
Did you say that? I would have never said that ever. Uh, she says she packed a few things together. Do you remember her doing that? No. Did you tell her that? Let me let me tell you how serious I am. I have a gun in my hand right now. Get the fuck out of here. No. Did you have cats at that time as pets? We used to have cats. I don't know if we still had them at this time. Okay. Nicole writes, I got real scared and grabbed Sydney and the cats in a bag for her and a bottle and a pair of sweats from the laundry room for me and got the hell got the heck out of the house. Do you see that? Well, no. see, it says it. I see it. It's, it's, it's not your it's foundation that it's Let, Nicole's writing. You recognize this handwriting as Nicole's? I can't tell with this, but it could be Nicole's, yes. Uh, do you uh, know why uh, Nicole would write such things if, if they were not true? Maybe she was feeling that way. That she would just invent, invent you this don't know, just whole tell thing? You don't know. I don't know. Well, was there some incident that uh, you believe she might have been referring to here? No. Does this resemble anything that happened that you can recall? Nothing I ever recall, no. Uh, is it possible that it happened, but you don't recall? Don't, it never don't answer it. It never happened. Never happened. You're 100% sure. I never said these things to Nicole ever. Does it, when you saw this for the time, were you shocked that uh, such things were written down by Nicole? Well, yes. don't answer that. It's irrelevant whether he was shocked huh? or not shocked. This were state you? of mind, don't, don't answer it, I told you. Did you do anything about it? <coughs> do anything to about investigate it? why she did this? What, when he was in jail? Yeah. Don't he answer a, that either. He Is had that? a lot of lawyers, Mr. Baker. Thank you very much for your gratuitous remark. And a lot of investigators. You don't have to answer that. Did you ever find out uh, the circumstances uh, behind Nicole's writing of these of this letter? Don't answer that. Well, he can tell me if he knows. He could tell you a lot of things if he knows if it's I didn't not, allow that's it. That's not privileged. It's not privileged? No. It's not attorney work product and it's not to Might have learned it from Al Cowlings. <laughs> Putting your lawyers aside, do you have any information about the circumstances of Exhibit 87? No. <clears throat> Now, you don't believe Exhibit 87 was made up by Nicole in connection with uh, getting out of the prenup, do you? Personally? Yes. Yes. And what makes you uh, say that? I don't know. She, when she talked to me about some of the things that they had her doing, one of the things that she had to write letters, and this looks like a letter with some of the other stuff I saw didn't look like letters. Well, when I asked you about this before, you never told me that she said that they had her they asked her to write letters. Don't, don't answer his argumentative question. Is that something that you just thought of now? Don't, 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 don't answer that question. Well, it's argumentative, and it's your saying what he testified to earlier. Are you now saying that uh, Nicole told you the lawyers had her write letters? She said to me they had to write a bunch of stuff, you know, Why would you and she was filling out something? various things, writing up these her words, letters. She didn't say anything other than notes, other than letters. I assumed they were all letters, but they weren't when I saw him in jail. What were the other ones that were not letters? This whole list that when she says, these are the things I remember, and she wrote all of these things that you guys start saying was a diary. Okay. Um, now, this document, did somebody tell you that this is what Nicole's lawyers had her write up, Exhibit 86? I Excuse just, me, Exhibit 87? No, but I just saw it with, in the packet that I got of all of those allegations, this was a part of it, so I assumed this was all a part of it. When you were given that packet, <coughs> were you told this is a packet of materials that Nicole made up? No, I was given a lot of discovery one day, and I sat in my cell and read it. And you saw a bunch of documents which appeared to be allegations by Nicole this against was, you, right? Well, this was all in one packet, yes. And it was those documents that you thought at that time were the documents that she made up, right? Well, I knew they were the documents she made up because they said they were hers, and I knew it was made up stuff. And how'd you know they were hers? Because it was purported to be hers. It was Who purported it to be hers? Whoever delivered it to me, and whatever it was, was purported to be her things with her lawyers. I, and who told I you? I can't they recall were hers? if they were signed by her or not, but the handwriting was much like this handwriting, and it was purported that these were allegations that she was making to her lawyers. 
Do you know where these documents came from when they were given to you? Discovery. Discovery from whom? From the prosecution. Now, where did the prosecutors get it? I have no idea. Did you ever ask? No. <coughs> in other words, you think they were found in Nicole's home or personal possessions or a lawyer's office? It's irrelevant where he thinks they were found. He told you he doesn't know. Don't answer that. <clears throat> Where's my paper? Let me show you um, Let me show you uh, the next exhibit in order, which will be, what are we? 88. 88. <coughs> Here you go, David. Ever seen Exhibit 88 before? I believe so, yes. Uh, just a, a minute or two ago, you were referring to a document where various incidents were listed. Is this the one you had in mind? Uh, yes. I believe I've already asked you about each of these um, claims of abuse, and you have uh, said none of them occurred. Is that right? Mm, correct. Um, who is Bruce? I believe her divorce lawyer. Nicole, uh, you recognize the uh, note to Bruce to be in Nicole's handwriting? It could be. I don't, I can't say that I totally rec right now recognize Nicole's handwriting, but I'm assuming it is. Uh, have any reason to believe this note is not in her handwriting? Mm, not really, no. Okay. Now, she writes here in the middle, uh, there were plenty of small times where he'd just push me or grab me hard enough to bruise my arms, but they happened so often that I can't remember specifics. Is, is that true that that occurred? No. And did you ever push her or grab her in, hard enough to bruise her arms? No. I'll go to the uh, second page where it talks about Pips on Rodeo. Mm -hmm. Is that the uh, place where, uh, she, where Nicole slapped you? No, this is uh, the place was still on, on Robertson. When did you get a wine closet put into your Rockingham uh, residence? Um, 19, I mean, what? What's there now, I got in 1990, maybe, 89 or 90. And before then, did you have a little um, area where you would store wine? Yes. What, what did you call that? I don't know. Wine closet? It could be called that, but I never called it a wine closet. <laughs> and how long uh, was that closet there? Since I had Rockingham. Yeah. And you don't recall any incident where you put Nicole in that closet, do you? Never. <clears throat> uh, could you go to the page uh, entitled The Vacations in here? What page is that? Uh, I think it's the next to last page. Well, the, sure. the first one says Italy, and then it has next to that Venice, Rome, Florence, England, <coughs> Germany. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes. Did you go on a vacation like that with Nicole? Yes. For her 21st birthday? Uh, I don't know if it was for a birthday. I, it's, I, I doubt it was for a birthday because uh, we were there for Oktoberfest, uh, the earlier part of Oktoberfest, uh, so it was late September. So. What year? I don't know. Early on in your relationship? 
Relatively, in terms of 17 years, yes, but it couldn't have been our birthday because it was Oktoberfest. The, the next line says Aspen, can't read the next word. Many times. Many times. Yeah. Is that true that you and she went there many times? Yes. It says 1986 Vail, uh, many times. Yes. Is that true also? Yes. 1988 Hawaii, many times. Is that true? Yes. Cabo San Lucas, is that mm, true? Yes. 1980. 1988 was Hawaii and Cabo. In 1989, it says Acapulco twice, birthday. Is that true? Did you go there then? In 1989, yeah. I don't think we went twice, but we so I went there for her, took her there for her birthday, yes. Did you go to Puerto Vallarta? No. Las Hadas? Mm, Las Hadas we went to on our honeymoon. Oh, Puerto Vallarta. Honey honeymoon mm. in 1985? Well, you're telling me to read what she says here. Is that where you went? Uh, yes, it was one of the places we went to. Uh, I don't ever recall going to Puerto Vallarta with Nicole, but I might have. We might have. Just so I'm clear, your honeymoon was in Las Hadas in 1985? Yes. Okay. Did you attend a, a wedding uh, for Michael Militello at the Ritz-Carlton with Nicole? Yes. That's on the last page. Yes. But uh, there was no a incident of abuse there? None at all. Who are uh, Eric and Val Von Watts? Uh, our neighbors. Was our neighbors. Now, there it says that um, you and they listen to music on Wilshire. What's this Wilshire place? Uh, do you know anything about that? No. I'm... I'm, I, I'm it just seemed to me that we once went to hear a band, uh, some some friend of Watts's once on Wilshire. I mean, it's you know it's a while ago. So, but it just seemed to me that we may have. Did you ever take Nicole to a hospital on Wilshire Boulevard? No. Is there a hospital on Wilshire? I don't know. Is there? Yeah, there is. Where? Uh, my two kids were born. The early kids were born at Good Samaritan Hospital downtown L.A. On Wilshire? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I guess it, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it goes all the way through. Yeah, it goes all the way through. Let me show you another document, Mr. Simpson. Mark this as um, Exhibit 89. <clears throat> see uh, this document before? No. I don't recall. Did you see it in jail? I might have. Does this document appear to, to you to be in Nicole's handwriting? Yeah, it looks like the same handwriting as this other. What, what did Nicole call you? OJ. This is a letter addressed to you, and it says in part here, I'd like you to keep this letter if we split so that you'll always know why we split. I'd also like you to keep it if we stay together as a reminder. Okay? Mm -hmm. Did you ever get this letter from her? No. Can you tell uh, by that statement uh, when this was written? No. Okay. After the June... Excuse me. After the January 1989 incident, uh, was there a time when you and she were uh, contemplating splitting? No. You never even discussed it. Until uh, she told me she wanted to split, it never came up. Did Nicole ever tell you uh, that she saw your marriage as a huge mistake? No. Prior to your marriage, but while you were living with her. Were you uh, frequently uh, seeing other women? No. Was that a subject of uh, contention between Nicole and you? You've gone into that, don't answer. Uh, You've gone into that. In this detail. letter indicates that it was, and I'm perhaps uh, 
hoping this might jog your recollection. Does it? Well, I don't know. I, I haven't read the letter, but I mean, obviously, when there were phone numbers, she would make comments. Just about phone numbers. Yeah. She says she took the blame many times for your cheating. You know what that refers to? No. She writes in the second paragraph, I remember a long time ago a girlfriend of yours wrote you a letter. She had, uh, she said, well, you aren't married yet, so let's get together. Do you know who, you ever received such a letter? I didn't, but she did. Nicole did? Yes. From whom? I don't know. I was at USC, and some girl put a letter on my windshield wiper, and evidently I never noticed it driving home, and Nicole took it off the windshield wiper. And she talked to you about it? Yes. What did it say? I don't recall. I never saw the letter. She never gave me the letter. Something about your getting together with her? It could have been. Okay. Uh, the third page of this letter, I'm not going to read, uh, read it. It's too long, and there's a lot of profanity in here. Um, but generally, the third page, uh, third paragraph, talks about your um, giving her you know, bad treatment, looks of disgust because she was heavy uh, from her pregnancy with Sydney. That's not true? No. Did you ever complain to Nicole, let's say before 1990, that um, the, her living habits bothered you? She was sloppy and messy. Living habits? Yeah, that she'd leave things around, she was not neat, leave her shoes on the floor, things like that. I, I think it was sort of a running thing with us, yes. And you, you were more neat and orderly? Yes. <coughs> now, at the t uh, next page of this, it says 2764 at the top. It says, there was also that time before Justin and after Sydney. I felt good about how I got back into shape. You beat the holy hell out of me. And we lied at the x-ray lab and said I fell off a bike. Remember? Now, do you see that? Yes. Do you recall such an incident? No. You ever beat it? It never happened. It never happened? Never happened. Now, in the next paragraph, uh, <coughs> Nicole writes about uh, the televised Clipper game and going to Stellini's before the game and your 40th birthday party in the week leading up to it. Do you recall those events? I don't recall. I recall my 40th birthday party. But the events around it, I don't remember, and we always went to Stellini, so. Do you know, do you, was there some uh, episode or incident at a, at a televised Clipper game that comes to mind? No. Okay. And, and top top of the next page says, since Justin's birth is the New Year's Eve beat up, but you deny beating her up, right? Is this Say something? Again? Excuse me? If there's I'm a word lost. after the... Where, Mr. Baker? What are we talking about? 276. The mad New Year's Eve? Oh, is that what it is? The mad New Year's Eve? Oh, you're right. And since Justin's <laughs> birth is the mad New Year's Eve beat up. You see that? I see it, yes. But that didn't occur, right? We had a fight on New Year's, as I told you. But you didn't beat her up? No. Okay. But the bruises and stuff she received, I feel totally uh, responsible for. And th on the next to last page, Nicole writes, I called the cops to save my life, whether you believe it or not. But I didn't pursue anything after that. I didn't prosecute. I didn't call the press didn't make a big charade out of it. I waited for it to die down and asked for it to. Is that true? Uh, what portion of it? The whole thing. 
Well, it couldn't be true because we had stopped fighting. She called the cops uh, after the fight was over. So I don't, I don't, that can't be true. It's not true that she called fault. the cops to save her life. That's what you're saying. That's right? what I'm saying, yes. The rest of that's true, though, right? What is the rest of it? I don't. I, I, the the next sentence, I didn't pursue anything after that. I didn't prosecute. I didn't call the press and didn't make a big charade out of it. I waited for it to die down and asked for it to. Yes. Tape change, is that what you said? Okay, go ahead. Ooh, I got tape. This is the end of tape number two of volume six. The time is approximately 3.50, and we are off the record. After uh, Nicole knew were married and had children, did she um, go out less frequently? Yes, we went out less frequently. Did you and she used to argue over her backing out of functions at the last minute? Yes. So look at the uh, last page of this. In the uh, paragraph in the middle, it says, I agree that we married, that after we married things changed, we couldn't have house full of people like I used to have over and barbecue for because I had other responsibilities. I didn't want to go to a lot of events and I backed down at the last minute on functions and trips. I admit I am sorry. Is it true that those things occurred? Yes. Let me um, mark the next three exhibits. What are they? Uh, 90 through 90. 90, 91, and 92. These are three letters from you, Mr. Simpson. I think you've seen these in court already. First one um, is a two page document. Mark that as exhibit 90. Okay. Second one's three page, that'll be 91. Mike. And the third one. Two. Seven page document, that'll be 92. You've seen these three exhibits before, 90, 91, well, 92. Can I read them? Oh, sure. Okay. What I want you to do is put them in sure. proper chronological order for me. Mike, you didn't care to be joined in that phone call at 9 tomorrow? Uh, 
Okay. Off the record, real quick. Do, do you have K? We're going off the record. No. I'm sorry. That would work. We're we'll okay. Uh, do we? Do you have Kaylin's second day ready? She'll probably be at your office. I think it was delivered today. Sorry. It went out this morning. It went to your office. Yes. I'm sorry. Back off. You wrote all three of these? Yes. They're all in your own handwriting, right? Yes. W when did you write these? Start with... Uh, I, I really can't say. I, I, it seems as if this one with the 92 would have been the first one, it just seems. Okay. And it seems that 90 would have been the last one, but okay. it was all in... One of them I wrote while we were, well, actually while we were having dinner. <laughs> I don't know which one, though. At Rockingham? Yes. <coughs> Do you know the dates of these, when you wrote these letters? I would say they were all written within the m month. You know, all pretty much written, written within the two weeks to a, you know, within that first month. Uh, January 1989? Yes. Did you give uh, all three of these to Nicole? Yes. Uh, Exhibit 90 is written on Cartier stationery. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Do you know where you got that from? No. Were you in New York during this time? No. You didn't have a football job in January of 1989, is no. that right? Why didn't ABC renew your contract, do you know? What do you mean, back in 86? Yeah. I don't know they were going with a whole new look on Monday Night Football, it's other than Gifford. Were you having a drinking problem in uh, December 1988, January 1989? No. In one of these letters, I think it's Exhibit uh, 92, says that you agreed to go to uh, Alcohol Anonymous. Yes. Why? Because uh, we had been drinking and the night got physical. And I didn't think there was an excuse for that. I didn't want to use alcohol or whatever. It, the way I reacted as an excuse. So, so you didn't have any drinking problem, but you went to AA anyway? No, Nicole told me, you don't have to go to AA. You're not a drunk, and I didn't. Were you drunk that night? Well, I think we both were drinking, so we had drank pretty good that night. Were you drunk? I was able to drive home, but I think we had drank pretty good that night, yes. Were you legally drunk? drunk? Did you take a blood alcohol test no. of yourself? H had Thank you me. taken one, would you have passed or failed? <laughs> Don't ask you that. That's a great question. Though. I... You're not going to let him answer? No. I think it calls for pure speculation. Um, the, in all three of these letters, you, basically you're expressing regret for the incident? Yes. And, and again, you, you seem to have some very strong words of regret here about uh, your conduct being unacceptable and so forth. The way I reacted, I thought I reacted unlike I had ever reacted before. But all you did was restrain her and try oh. to get her out of the room, right? I physically removed her from a room. And I, I'd never really done that before. In Exhibit 91, you talk about the conversation with the detective um, yes. Is that Edwards? No. Who is that? Farrell. You also say you're not trying to buy her out, buy Nicole out, in Exhibit 91. What did you mean by that? I 
think it was during that period of time that I had discussed with her, uh, or I had sent her or discussed with her this, uh, this um, letter about the prenuptial agreement. Whose idea was that? Mine. Okay. Did Nicole respond to these letters? She wrote me two letters, I believe. Do you have them? No. Have you seen them uh, since uh, you went to jail? No. What did her letter say, if you can remember? Mm, how she was uh, disappointed in how the night went, uh, and how she had been trying so hard, and uh, she apologized also. Uh, and tone-wise, almost what I wrote to her. Okay. <coughs> the next document I'm going to mark is, um, what's the next one? 93? It's an agreement. Which one is it? 93. We got to get better copies. Is this the agreement that you uh, offered, Nicole? I believe so. And whose handwriting is this agreement? I don't know. Looks like it may be Skip Taft. You authorized Taft to uh, write this on your behalf? Yes. Let me, um, who's a, was it your idea or Taft's idea, by the way? Mine. And did, did you discuss it with Nicole before you offered it to her? I think so. And what did she say? I didn't think it mattered to her one way or the other, but it, this letter was more for me than it was for her. Okay, and um, do you know when she signed this document? A lot later. Do you know why? I have no idea. I'll mark as the next exhibit a um, better copy of this document. What are we up to? 90, 94. 94 plus uh, an attachment to it. Here, David, that's my. Look at Exhibit uh, 94, Mr. Simpson, and the uh, second page is a letter from uh, Nicole to Skip, who I take to, to be Skip Taft, stating it has taken me till now to sign this agreement. Until recently, I didn't even think we'd ever reconcile. Things look good, in fact, better than they've looked in a long time. Please send a copy to Bruce Clemens and to me. Thanks, Nicole. And then the last page is an August 8, 1989 letter from Taft to Clemens transmitting the Cole signed document. Do you see that? Mm, yes. Okay. Um, now, between January of 89 and August of 1989, when Nicole signed the document, were you separated from her? No, except for the times that we've already discussed, the three, three days. Three, day, three day period. Right. Yes. Um, were you having a difficulties working through the incident that occurred on the 80, uh, on New Year's Eve? I think we've gone through this in, in some detail. <clears throat> what I'm focusing on here, obviously, is a statement by Nicole that she didn't think we'd ever reconcile, and she underlines, underlines, recon underlines the word ever. And I'm wondering whether um, this causes you now to remember what? Anything more than what you've already told me about this? No, incident. we never separated. We lived together. We took trips together that spring. But as far as y y you were concerned, the incident was behind you within a couple of days after it occurred, right? As far as I was concerned, the incident was n would never be behind us. Uh, but we went on with our lives a couple of days after. We, I mean, we ended up back together, and we took some trips together, and we continued on with our lives. But I was going to therapy, and we are going to therapy together. 
so the incident was still very much alive in, in, in our consciousness. Did you um, ever talk to Nicole about why she hadn't uh, signed the agreement? No. So why it was taking her uh, time to sign it? No, it was up to her. Okay. Did you and she ever have discussions about uh, her personal safety? No. And you're assuring her personal safety? Other than this? Y you mean assuring his personal safety vis-a-vis uh, -vis OJ? Yes. No. That came up with, uh, the, with uh, Dr. Katain, did it not? Uh, you'd have to ask Dr. Katain. <coughs> You're trying to out slouch Candyman? Oh, no, Next is Exhibit 95. He's got his shoes on. There you go. Exhibit 95 is the no low contendery plea to the misdemeanor of spousal abuse plus some related documents. That was a very timely comment. You've already testified that you... Even though Nicole didn't press charges, they, the prosecutors brought us a complaint against you, is that right? Yes. And um, you pled no low contendery to the charge of spousal abuse, correct? Yes. And you received what as a penalty? <sighs> uh, com basically, uh, community service time. How many hours? I don't know. Did you perform them? Yes. And you also went to see Burton Kate. That's correct. Okay, and Nicole came with you? Maybe once or twice she was uh, a part of it, but yes. Okay. Not always. Now, in uh, Mr. Kate's letter here, which is a part of this attachment, letter to Howard Weitzman dated uh, April 3, 1989. Weitzman was your lawyer in connection with this mm -hmm. spousal abuse proceeding, right? Is that right? Weitzman was your yes. lawyer. Uh, Kate writes that uh, you have expressed statements to him assuring uh, the safety of Nicole. Pardon do you, me? Do you see that on the second page there? Second page of Kate's Bert letter. Kate's letter. And then in this next page, Mr. Simpson, numbers six and seven at the bottom, mm -hmm. says uh, you have promised your wife safety. You see that? Yes. Now, uh, did you and Nicole have discussions about this? No. About her safety? No. It was never an issue? No, that's what this letter was about. Excuse me? That's what this letter was about. Are you referring to the agreement? Yes. What do you mean by that? That's what the letter was about. How does the, the letter if it provides a financial disincentive to you to hit her in the future, is that right? Yes. Okay, and that's how you assured her safety, right? Well, that's and you mean what I gave her. In conjunction with this no. going to therapy and, and the no. other things that he's testified to. Yes. Did you tell Dr. Kate uh, anything different than what you've testified to in this deposition about what happened that evening? I don't know if I can talk about what Dr. Kate and I talked about. No, you don't have to. You don't have to discuss anything with Dr. Kate and you talked about other than what's put, set forth in the letter. Well, it pretty much covers everything, uh, Mr. Baker. I don't, I don't agree with you. He doesn't describe the incident at all unless I missed it, uh, well, Mr. Well, it's uh, all Pepper. about the incident, though. He doesn't describe the incident, and well, he doesn't have to. Uh, your question went to that incident, yeah, I thought. I want to know what exactly you told the, the doctor about what happened that and, night. And I instruct him not to answer that question based upon the psychotherapist patient privilege. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Dr. Kate writes that you intend to remain in therapy for an extended period of time. Did you? Yes. How long were you in therapy, all told? Well, I don't think I ever stopped. I just would call him from time to time as I, in pertaining to when I felt that I needed another perspective, as I stated in the video. How many times did um, you consult him with respect to spousal abuse issues? I think once we 
No, you, you, you can ask the number. You can tell the number of times. Yeah. I think once once we went beyond the once it was beyond the court, whatever the court thing was, I continued to see him, and and at that point it wasn't about spousal abuse. It was just from time to time when I needed another perspective on whatever was happening. You know how many uh, sessions you had pursuant to the court's order? No. Okay. I'd like to show you. Uh, this other document here called Anti-Nuptial Agreement. Ninety-six, right? Ninety-six. I've got ninety-five left. Yeah, ninety-six. Thank you, Dave. Ninety-six. This is the uh, prenuptial agreement or the antinuptial agreement that you and Nicole entered into prior to marriage? I believe so. Okay. And is this the antinuptial agreement that uh, Nicole was trying to uh, invalidate by inventing claims of spousal abuse? I believe so. <coughs> do, you, do you have any basis? Uh, uh, withdrawn. Do you know how she was going to attempt to invalidate this agreement by inventing claims of abuse? I'm, it had something to do with this letter and uh, retroactively, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a, it was a aborted attempt that never really got much breath. But the, the letter that you gave her said that if uh, you ever hit her after the date of that letter, Mm -hmm. then the prenuptial agreement would be torn up, right? Mm -hmm. And the prenuptial agreement was Exhibit 96, correct? Correct. So all she had to do was invent one episode after uh, the date of the uh, February 1989 agreement, correct? Well, she well, would have to prove asking, it. You're asking right. him to... She would have had to prove it. She would have to prove it, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you know why she uh, made up a number of incidents that are dated long before? Uh, February of 1989? We've been through this and, and it calls for speculation and don't answer Do that. Do you have an understanding as to why pre-February 1989 incidents were invented no, no, you're not in the answer. course of these divorce proceedings? You're not going to answer that. You, you've gone through that and you're asking him to speculate. And, I'm not asking him to speculate. And his opinion is irrelevant to any But, but what if somebody told him? <laughs> what? You want, words, more? What you, want, you, want, you want more hearsay? You didn't get enough of Faye Resnick, Stepo? Faye has a lot of direct admissions, uh, Mr. Simpson. We'll see. You're not going to let him answer? No. <coughs> the next document is um, Exhibit 97. You ever seen this document before? I don't recall. Do you know what it is? No. you know whether Nicole was keeping a diary at any time during your marriage? I don't believe so. Okay. Is this one of the documents you saw in jail? Now that I see these dreams, I'm pretty sure I did. Excuse me? Now that I see this little thing with dreams here, I, I think I think I did. Uh, that would have been the first time you saw this? Yes. Um, you go to the uh, third page of this. It's, or the fourth page, actually. On the side, it says 3139. And in what does it say? 3139, right over here. You got it right here. Yeah. On the left side there, Mr. Simpson says, middle of the page, Par Saturday was worse. O.J. picked us up in Cabo. Sunday was a blow-up. Underneath that painful, painful week. Do you see that? Saturday was worse. O.J. picked us up. I, I, uh, in Cabo. 
I don't know what this would be referring to. You, you have no um, no recollection of that event. What do you mean by picking them up in Kabul? Is this when they came down when Nicole followed us down to come? I don't know when this is. That's why I'm asking you. No, don't speculate. That, that's the only time I would. Okay, just okay. don't speculate. No, what's, I, what's the only time? Pardon me? The only time I recall them arriving in Kabul that. I wasn't there. May have been that time. April '93, when she came with Faye and the children. She did come to Kabul once, and uh, she she did one year in '94, I believe, come to Kabul later than I did. But I don't know. I don't. I can't read this, so I can't. If I could read it all, I probably could help you. Did Nicole used to talk to her? Talk to you about her dreams? I think she read something, and they told them to write down her dreams, I you, believe. You know when that was? That, in my mind, that was the therapy she went to that when she came out of, I'm speculating. <laughs> yeah, what I'm what time frame are you referring to? Before we got back together is what I'm speculating to, but... The I, therapy that she was in? Yeah, it seems like the guy told her to, to write her dreams down or something, or she read it somewhere. I just kind of recall that going on. Go to the last uh, page of this, or next to the last page. It, it says on the left side, I believe, however, that O.J. needs to learn Next how to the last page? Yeah. Where? Right over here. Uh -huh. It says, I believe, however, that O.J. needs to learn how to take space. Also, he is still very possessive obsessive and controlling. Uh, do you agree that you were possessive in your relationship with Nicole? And you're inserting that that means that he was possessive, obsessive with her, right? That, that's the tone of your question, yes. the import of your question? Yes. Well, I, I don't think that says that at all. Were you? I don't believe so. Not, not the first two, no. Were, were you obsessive with Nicole? I don't believe so at all. Controlling? I think I'm a controlling person, period. And you were controlling with Nicole too, right? Uh, I think in my life, in my space, I, I like my space the way I like my space. My question was whether you were also controlling with Nicole. No. What were you, were you controlling generally but not with Nicole, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think in general that I like my space, I like things the way I like things, and people who come into my life tend to conform to the way I do things. Did Nicole conform? Yes. Not, not the last year we were together, but certainly before she did, yes. By last year you were together, what do you mean? Uh, the last year we were together, I wouldn't let her move in, so consequently she had her space to do whatever she wanted to do. 1993 to 1994? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, <coughs> and you were not obsessive towards her, is that right? No. Well, I may have been obsessive in that I bought her too many things, but outside of that, I would be the same way with any girl in my life. Okay. Um, Mother's Day of 1994. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you go down to uh, see Nicole without being invited? No. You went to uh, Sean's uh, communion on that Saturday? Yes. And then Mother's Day was the next day? Yes. And uh, did Nicole ask you to come down and, and join the family? Yes, we had a date. Uh, we were had a Saturday night date. Now that Saturday, Nicole, um, uh, you, first of all, you got there really early in the morning, Saturday morning after yes. the incident on the freeway, right? Yes. Now on that Saturday, um, you uh, and Nicole were arguing at her mother's house, right? No. Uh, Nicole left uh, to go home while you were out getting your car washed, is that right? No, Nicole went to my place to sleep while I went and bought Mother's Day's gifts for Judy, Denise, Dominique, uh, and Nicole. And when you got back to uh, the Brown residence, Nicole wasn't there, right? She was at my place late. And the kids were with the Browns, right? Yes. And then you went over to, um, you went over to uh, the condo with Nicole, right? Yeah. She was there sleeping, right? Yes. And you wanted to go out that evening, right? No, I kind of went back and forth. I took a nap and then I woke her up at 8 o'clock to go to dinner. <laughs> now, she said she didn't want to go out, right? No, she got dressed and she got to the door, and then she freaked out. 
didn't you um, get on the bed while she was lying on it and straddle her? No. And sort of force her Definitely not. shoulders down against, pinned her against the bed? Definitely not. And you have an argument with her on the bed while you were upset because she didn't want to go out? No. She, we got to the door, I, the car was warming up, and she freaked out and said, look at me, I'm having a breakdown. I can't do this. And I said, what's <laughs> the matter with you? And we talked, and she calmed down, and we went to her, her mother's house to drop off the night stuff for the kids. Then we went to the restaurant and had dinner. And there was absolutely no incident where you had mounted her or straddled her on the bed? None. Uh, when you uh, awakened her to go out, did, was she amenable to going out with you? Yeah, she got up, took a shower, got dressed. So everything was all right until you started to leave, and then all of a sudden and she... All of a sudden she just freaked. She was shaking. I mean, I could visibly see that, that something was wrong. And you had no idea why that was happening? Well, it was why I was slowly pulling away, uh, because that's the way it, she sounded when I was in, from time to time, when I was in Puerto Rico. Now, the next day, um, you went to the Browns for Mother's Day, right? Yes. Were, were relations between uh, Nicole and you uh, good that day? Yeah, things were, it was, that's the strange thing about it, that things were great that day. There was no tension? None. That We were laughing, there was a, some book that Judy had bought for Nicole, and we were all reading it saying, this is you, Nicole, <laughs> this is you, Nicole, and it was, it was really a fun day. Okay. As of May uh, 8, 1994, which is this Mother's Day, did Nicole have a will? Uh, yes. When had she made that will? Just about every time we took a trip, she wrote out what she had, uh, what she was uh, doing, and uh, who she was leaving things with. That started very early in our relationship. Once she started attaining things, uh, I know her attaining, attaining things. things. And I think Lou was trying to get her to sign, because I remember seeing something Lou was talking to her that day even about some, because she got, bought the house and Nicole had been putting something off and putting it off. And Lou was trying to get her to fill out something for a will. And to my knowledge, Nicole never did, but I'm told that there's a signed will somewhere, but I'm also told that Never Nicole mind, didn't never sign. mind. Okay. But you're also told what? Don't, don't answer that. No. That's you cut him off in the middle of a I sentence. I sure did cut well, him off in the middle why? of it. Why? He was answering the question. He was not. He was going well beyond the question. <coughs> well, <you have> to. <coughs> I'm, told, I'm told that there's a sign rules. But I'm also told what? What are you told about this will? Don't answer that. Well, now he's responding to a question. No, Mr. he's not going to answer the question. We're not going to get into that. Get into what? We're not going to get into to, uh, what is it about this will that uh, that you know that you were going to tell me a minute ago? Don't answer that question. The will is irrelevant to any issue in this case. Not if Nicole was making out a will because she feared for her life. Well, you, you can put whatever spin you want on it, but I'm not going to let him answer that. It's irrelevant. How many times did uh, Nicole make out a will to your knowledge? I know, to my knowledge, on numerous occasions when we took trips, she would write stuff down. I know, to my knowledge, uh, once the kids were born, she wrote down a broad thing about who gets what. Uh, and I know, to my knowledge, Lou Brown had some papers that he wanted her to, 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 to sign then. Well, how many wills do you know that she wrote out? We call them wills. They were, they were like who would get whatever if if the plane crashed or if something happened to us who would get what hers hers thing is totally separate than mine she would write it out in her own handwriting i believe so yes and she would do this every time that she took a trip no i think she would it would like i remember at one time i asked her had she upgraded her will at at some point because she nicole had at one point attained a a, a, a decent wealth close to a million dollar wealth uh, and I was asking her at one point uh, had she upgraded her will and I believe she, when we were splitting up she did again do you know why um, Nicole took out Arnell and Jason in her will of May 8 1994 well there's no foundation for that do you know anything about that 
I never knew that they were in her will. So you don't know why they were taken out? I never knew that they were ever in any, in any will of, I don't know why they would be in any will of Nicole's, and I was not aware that they were ever in any will of Nicole's. Did she talk to you about making a will out on that day? No. Well, no. No, I just recall her dad was saying, and she, we were talking, and her dad was saying something, and uh, I felt he wanted her to come and look at some papers, and Nicole just didn't want to do it. This is a convenient time. We'll break we at 9.30. Why don't we start from 10, because 10. I can get here at 9.30. That's fine. Good. Do you want, I think Ed, oh, I'll be in that right for a minute. Ed's handling that for a minute. And maybe in the call.